Hello, happy Crimson Katoos Day. Eden Wraith, good to see you. You're here for the glory of pixels. We're going to have pixels. We're going to show, I'm going to show uh, the latest environment that I've been working on for my friend's game, this spaceship office environment. And I'll be showing the Blender file. I said the magic word, Blender. And uh, what it looks like kind of rendered with the colors applied. And right now I'm just going to be painting over some of that stuff that I have. Mouse Miss, hey, hey, Ampersine, good to see you. Um, yeah, so there's no Dan tonight. Dan is busy. Go on, Monsama, good to see you. And and next week, um, I won't be able to stream, and Dan will also not be able to stream, so there's going to be a, a, a week off. My summer is a little bit more irregular, I suppose. <laughs> Hero of Shapiro, good to see you. That image you, ma you mailed out with the bucket in the speech bubble made me laugh. <laughs> I'm glad. I, 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 I really enjoy making um, YouTube thumbnail video of YouTube video thumbnails. I try not to spend too much time on them, but it's just fun to like screen grab like a weird expression or something. <laughs> Blahelt and happy Crimson Good Tuesday! Happy, happy Crimson Good Tuesday! Yeah, it's um, there, there's not much to discuss. I, yeah, just I'm actually this is my um, my last week of working on my friend's pro uh, my friend's project, and so I'm I need to get this um, office environment finished. Was kind of hoping to get concepts done on another environment for his game as well um, but we'll see how far I get tonight with the painting and yeah I was kind of hoping to get this whole other environment finished as well not just this office one the one after the office one but I feel like that's that's asking a bit much for the week just a Jeffy good to see you slot studio good evening yes just a Jeffy I'm going to show the blender file for the office environment that I've built so I, I'm glad you're here for that um, but first uh, we're gonna just show the usual few little things. First thing is Witch Strandings, which is coming out next week. It's coming out July the 7th, which is kind of amazing. Um, hold on. This one, yeah. Yeah, so this is being published by Modern Wolf, and yeah, I'm not too sure what else I can say about it, except there is that amazing, the amazing game trailer. Oh, just a Jeffy, thanks for the sub. Thank you, thank you. Is it WS that I did do that? Which strandings? Are there links associated with that? Oh, no? Hmm. Oh, oh, you know what? I know what it is. It's MW. There it is. Yeah. So there is a, a, Steam wish, a Steam page for Witch Strandings, and uh, please wishlist if it looks like something you're interested in. And there is a trailer, and I don't know where, where I would have done with the trailer, but the trailer is probably on the Steam page too, I suppose. But yeah, that's... Oh my gosh, my head. Hold on. Let me fix my, my head. I'm, okay, there. Yeah, so that's coming out next week, so that's pretty exciting. I think that's pretty much... Judith Butler, stri uh, Judith Butler Strikes. <laughs> Judith Butler's Lover, good to see you. Yeah, you know what? Now that you're here, I guess I'm going to uh, run the trailer, and then we're going to get started on what we're going to get started on which is uh, more painting on my 3D environment. But yeah, I'll introduce myself. Welcome to Crimson Couture's Day. We do this um, not every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We've been a bit more sporadic in the summer, but um, usually at 8 p.m. Eastern, I do some art stuff, although I have not really been doing pixel art stuff. I've been kind of on contract with, with a friend of mine right now, but that's going to be over as of, I think, this week, the end of this week. And so... I will be getting back into the pixel bucket. We're going to be putting the finishing touches on that and then moving on to something else. And sometimes it's music. Sometimes Dan is here with music and we compose tracks and stuff for the Crimson Diamond, which is, of course, the game that I've been working on for however many years it's been. And uh, it's a good time. And I'm really, the thing is about working on other projects and like learning all the stuff, like learning Blender, learning how to use Clip Studio Paint, all that, and like learning how to do texture sheets and everything. Um, is that I cannot wait to get back into my little comfort zone of working on the Crimson Diamond. It's been way too long, and I'm super, super, super keen to get back to it. So that's a good thing. Deluxe Tux, hey everyone, good to see you. Dafo, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to stream. Yeah, tonight, um, yeah, and sometimes, yes, so sometimes it's art, sometimes it's music. Usually when there's an art stream, I'll, I stream like an adventure game that I've been playing, and so I've been playing Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the EGA version. 
but because I've got, I've got this deadline for the end of the week, I need to deliver this office environment painted, so we're not going to get to have any time to play any games tonight. Although I have heard, I've been told, that I'm tantalizingly close to finishing Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade. And i got to pick something new, actually, after that. I, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on EGA Adventure Games, which is the same color palette that I'm using. Grindislav, happy Crimson Good Tuesday! Grindislav of course, is Francisco Gonzalez, who is currently developing Rosewater and uh, released uh, Lamplight City and Golden Wake, which are now both on sale right now on Steam. And he is, uh, he hosts Wild West Wednesdays on Twitch at 1 p.m. Eastern. And Gundeslav, are you streaming this week? And if so, what are you streaming? Yeah. Rosewater is looking really good. I uh, Yeah, I hear that you're gonna release maybe next year sometime i'm probably in the same boat as you actually <laughs> but yeah I, i'll i'll run my trailer the crimson diamond is a, this a, the particular color palette we're using a particular sound system the roland mt32 synth and it kind of looks retro but hopefully it doesn't play like a retro game kind of sand sanding off the edges and and learning from the game design that happened before and trying to deliver an experience that is you know something that is approachable for people who have never played a, a text parser adventure game but yes judah butler's lover i will play the trailer now and then we're gonna we're gonna get into it so let me put a pause oh good yes grindislav is streaming please follow him at grindislav on twitch working on backgrounds tomorrow david alexander 82 good to see you yes is um is Robot Spacer still still streaming the Colonel's Bequest? Because if he is, I'm totally going to be raiding him. Oh, yes. Yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna run my trailer real quick, and then we're gonna get into it. Okay. So, uh, let me turn this music down or off, and we're gonna run the trailer, and then we're gonna get into it. Cause I am behind. Okay. Crimson Ontario was once a prosperous, lively mining town. But that was a long time ago. Now it's quiet, nearly deserted, and some folks aim to keep it that way. Nancy Maple is an aspiring mineralogist assigned to follow the trail of a dazzling diamond. An intriguing cast of characters has converged under one roof, each meaning to get their own way, or else. Will Nancy untangle the mysteries and machinations before it's too late? Will the sleepy town of Crimson shine once more? Find out in The Crimson Diamond, an upcoming adventure game by Julia Minamata. The Crimson Diamond demo is available on Steam and Itch.io for Windows PC and Mac OS. Well, I forgot to turn off my mic completely, so at least that means I'm not going to forget to turn it back on. Dafo, um, Dafo asked, uh, sorry, I'm just catching up. Did you ever get to play King's Quest IV recently? If you did, I apologize. No need to apologize. I ask the same questions um, a lot, and this is the first time you're asking that question. Um, I, I played King's Quest IV like, way back in the day. I haven't played it since. Uh, so I would be open to playing that, but I kind of want to play stuff I've never played before. Um, the first game that I let's played, I I did uh, I did Personal Nightmare by Horrorsoft. The second game I played was Last Half of Darkness by Soft Labs Software Laboratories, I think they're called. And the third one was of course of course was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So I've been really enjoying playing EGA adventure games I'd never played before, and then also from studios that I've never kind of really played too much of. So yeah. Um, I had played a little bit of that horror soft game, Last Half of Darkness, way back. I still I have the disc actually, but um, you're just trying to experience like different ways of doing things and different ways of displaying information and how to design a, an adventure game. It's kind of fascinating the ways that it's people approach that and companies approach that differently. Okay, yes, Master. So, uh, Robot Spacer has started another playthrough of the Colonel's Bequest. Yeah, I, I, I hung around after I raided the other night, so I missed a week, but I did raid a couple weeks ago, and he had started his second playthrough, and he was doing. First of all, the first time he played it, he did amazingly, and the second time he was doing even better. So, if he's still playing it by the time we're ready to raid, we're totally gonna go there. Okay, so David Alexander, okay, you also to verify that he is. Got through it, but didn't finish complete, uh, completing a few runs trying to get a better, more complete ending. Okay, cool. 
Oh, Dolpho, it's been a couple years since you played the, the, the Crimson Diamond demo. Artwork is good. Yeah, the artwork, I feel like as I keep going on and on, I, I think I'm even improving on the style and it kind of makes me want to redo screens, but I'm not going to do that because that way madness lies. And when I'm watching Robot Spacer play the Colonel's Bequest, I'm like, I want to like tweak my, my screens and make them look better because Colonel's Bequest is just that beautiful. Dual names, happy Crimson Good Tuesday, good to see you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, AGI version of King's Quest 4. I think I played the SCI version myself, but I do like Chonky. Um, somebody suggested Manhunter, the Manhunter games from Sierra, which are gorgeous chonk, but I'm really scared of them because they have those arcade sequences, and we just might never get through them just for that alone. Uh, same goes for Gold Rush, which is beautiful, probably the most beautiful AGI game, but I'm just super intimidated by them. Okay, so... Let us move on to the to the stuff, to the stuff. First thing we're going to show really quickly, I'm going to show the Blender office. Just to Jeffy if you're here. Here it is. Uh, the eyeshade dual names. This is a number of different eyeshadows. I, um, there is some Pat McGrath Celestial Mothership and some Huda Beauty, a um, couple different palettes. I like to, I like to do a lot of color. So this is the environment that I can it's kind of super sloppy you can see because it I, we're not really using the actual 3d elements in here which I just I'm just using this as a guide um, so this was the this was the concept art I had done for it this thing <laughs> so there's that I hope you can see this oh I should turn the music back on our good old music and I'm gonna make sure that okay good that's still working good okay Eating <laughs> uh, with perhaps a quick play of a Manhunter game until you get lost or stuck in an arcade sequence. Okay, very possibly. I am very, very tempted. Oh wow, I, I went through the wrong place. Okay, so that was the concept piece I did for this. Yeah, Celestial Mothership do does sound like a '60s hippie band. Pat McGrath. Her eyeshadows are extremely expensive. The palettes are very expensive, but I got one that um, was a special edition palette that had more, more. Um, more pal more I don't know what the individual ones are called again um, more eyeshadows than their her usual ones it was still not not cheap but it was it's the best eyeshadow I've ever used Chris Quinn Chris Quinn Chris Quinn good to see you <laughs> yeah so this is this is the concept and then so yeah I kind of um roughed everything in so some of the stuff you can see some of the stuff is like um, this 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 middle thing is like a light source and there's cameras and everything um, and you can see I did create dashboards and stuff. And so there's this kind of a 70s looking computer here along uh, on the back desk, all the rest of it. And so when this is, um, this might take a while. Oh, there it goes. Okay, yeah, so this is kind of what it looks like. All these things are painted, actually. I don't know. I guess this is my non-painted version. But I did painstakingly paint all this. Um, in fact... Yeah, and you can see like the light is being is nicely um, doing its thing. Adolfo, I, I, I think this is a Commodore PET or a PET. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Chris Gwynn, this is not for Crimson Diamond. This is um, this is for a project. I'm, I I went a two month uh, full time contract. A friend of mine is is making a game, and so he asked me to like learn all this stuff. And I said, sure, I'll learn all this stuff. Yeah, it's a comedy. Yeah, so I, he originally, yeah, so you can see in the concept, actually, this is this is actually the revised concept. I had originally had like a 90 CRT looking computer in on this, for this computer here. Um, but uh, Ilya, he wanted something more 70s looking because actually I'm using very 70s color in this room. And so I changed it to the, the PET or PET. I don't even know how to call it, but yeah, I did, I did use that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to open up um, don't save. Because I do have it painted, a painted version of this thing. Oh, here it is. Um, this one, maybe? And then I'm going to close Blender because it's really using a lot of resources. Oh, this is just the render? Oh. Give it a second. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I just put yeah. I just stuck like a red blue light on top. Okay, that's not working. I don't want that. Okay, so yeah, this 
uh, this is the thing. And here it is, like I call I did color all of it. Um, painstakingly colored it. And so this was the guide I used for for the 2D painting for this game. Yes, the pea green color. Yeah, the app this pea green is gonna be a carpet, like a kind of a shag carpet type of a thing. You must have it. And of course it's got you kinda of have those steel case file filing cabinets. That's the mainstay of the seventies. Of 70s office <laughs> furnishings. But yeah, so that's the blender done up. There's a little Commodore PET. Avocado green. Mr. V, welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Evie. I gotta. I have to. Um, I have to render with Evie because uh, my computer is is not that strong. <laughs> Hi. Um, oh, dual names. Thank you. Say this looks good. I, I just am learning all this stuff. So this is like my second environment that I built with Blender. <laughs> I love the colors, Chris. Gwen. I love yeah that avocado green. It's kind of like um, beautiful '70s muted colors, like that film stock, which which kind of makes the greens look muddy. Oh yeah. Okay. Dual name says I didn't say good. I said amazing. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. But yeah, let's close that because that. Um, that's very resource heavy. And so what I'm doing is I took a screen cap of the render and here here's the here's what it looks like. And so this is the exact camera angle that that's going to be used in the game. And I've been painstakingly going in and um, painting painting every little bit. Cosmic 43, good evening. Good to see you. Yeah, this is yeah, this is my second one. So you can see how I'm trying to apply um, paint strokes and everything to it. So it kind of oh wow, this is going really slow. Is there anything else I can jettison so this will run faster? No. Yikes, that took a while. But yeah, I'm just trying to add some brush strokes. I need to actually be less tight with the brush strokes and make it look more painterly. But um, my default is kind of just to stick super uh, super tight with it and everything is separated out so you can see I'm currently working on um, wow this is slow yeah I'm currently working on this steel case file cabinet so everything had to be separate out, separated out and that's what we're gonna be doing with the, for the rest of the night you guys because <laughs> I need to get this done <laughs> so I hope you don't mind oh wow my computer didn't like that Let's give it a second. Oh, Mr. V, you love Blender so much. I've been, uh, there's so many amazing Blender environments on, on Twitter that I see and they're gorgeous. And I, I find it extremely appealing. Um, but this, but this process is, is, is pretty involved um, because, is that where that is? Okay, because you have to kind of do the concept piece, like that's the 2D drawing, and then model it in 3D and paint it in 3D, and then take it into a paint program and then paint that back into 2D, and it's like all these steps, it takes a long, long time, but I, I think it's worth the effort. Stribblitz, it's good to see you. Yeah, 3D is... I... yeah, I mean, I'm, I find it extremely intimidating too. So what I've been trying to do with this stuff is this idea of showing the paint, the uh, the brush strokes more here to give this whole thing more um, personality. But you definitely keeping the the lighting as a good um, a good guide. Oh, Cosmic Four Three, <laughs> I appreciate it. But yeah, like I was saying a bit earlier, I cannot wait to get back to my pixel art comfort zone where it's like every piece is not part of like a multi-stage effort. But this was a really good learning experience for sure. Um, and it's just good to have 
this skill in my back pocket in case I do want to use it for something. And if I, you know, if I'm having trouble, you know, some kind of environment that I want to create in um, in the Crimson Diamond, I can use Blender to kind of mock some something up, really. And it's always good to learn. And and it's something I've kind of I've wanted to learn more digital painting and I've wanted to learn a bit of 3D and you know like I got paid to do this contract and learn at the same time so and also you know Ilya is a friend of mine from college and so I'm more than happy to kind of help him with his stuff you know so it's a it's a win-win-win only thing that doesn't end up winning is the Crimson Diamond but um I mentioned before I'm really gonna try to to focus to focus in on it um, from from the, you know here on out basically I'm gonna try to not pick up stuff like pick up commissions and things oh Goman Sama thank you Goman Sama says yes very impressive especially considering you just started learning it yeah I a lot of the geometry and stuff I do is it's extremely sloppy, but I'm glad it doesn't have to be not sloppy. Oops. It just has to serve as a good guide, and, and that's really all it has to be. And so I'm really... It's kind of the best way for me to learn it. Oh, Ben Chandler does that a lot for Techno Babylon. Oh, so it does, is Ben using Blender as well? Dual names? I should have asked him for help. <laughs> I need help. That was okay though. No, it was, it was mostly fine. And the great thing about Blender, well, there's a few good things about Blender. I mean, Blender is free, which is great. There's also, because it's free, there's like a huge community of people using it and there's tons of like t tutorials and everything online. So it's, it's, um, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's easy to learn, but it, there's a lot of, good stuff out there for learning stuff but yeah you see I'm, I'm so tight with this stuff I need to need to loosen it up a little bit I think and also trying to make the geometry like less perfectly pointy oh blender he does use blender ah oh, okay Grunislav as well says he's been using it to mock up backgrounds for old skies as well oh cool that's good to know. So maybe I will end up using this for my own purposes. After all. I, I don't... I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of done with it for now for a little bit, I think. Because just analyzing um, the old Sierra backgrounds. They're, they're, which I did do actually on a very early stream. I kind of looked at some adve uh, Sierra adventure game backgrounds. And the, the perspective does not work in them at all. And it's fine. And that's the same way I approach my own stuff. Like, that's the same way I've been approaching the Crimson Diamond perspective. It's, like, not applicable. If it kind of feels okay, and it's okay. That's how kind of my philosophy with it. Uh, it definitely makes perspective uh, easier. Yeah. Every time... Francisco, every time you bust out a perspective grid, I just... I kind of start feeling like, oh my god, maybe I should be doing this. Because I totally don't. <laughs> I just I just try to fake it. And I feel like a fraud. Oh no. Dual names your schedule changed up. Ah, uh, Jesse Jeff says, Blender used to be good because it's free, now it's good because it's good. Now developing at a fast rate. A couple of years, interest has increased substantially, attracting more devs and funding sources, and that's my one and only Blender rant for, t for the night, I promise. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't think of anything else that I'd need to ever use for 3D, as far as, you know, as far as that goes. Because it can do so much more than what I've already done with it, and I can already see how useful it's going to be. Oh, oh, thanks, Grindislav. Grindislav says, you can fake it and, and it looks good, but I can't. 
Well, you're doing like a high resolution thing as well. So that's that's a whole other consideration, which was super brave of you to do. Do you think, Grindislav, that your next game after Rosewater, which I'm sure you have lots of ideas for, um, is it gonna are you gonna up the resolution again, or do you think you're gonna stay with the, your current resolution? A Golden Wake. I I own a Golden Wake. I need to like I installed it and everything, and I just have to like it's one of those things where yeah I gotta get back to it to play it. I gotta get back to Kathy Rain, which I installed and started. Um, everything. You're good with 12, 1280 by 720? Ah. Yeah, like that level of detail, I, 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 I probably wouldn't get into. I like the super low res kind of 320 by 200 look. Or even like I said, I want to try making something in AGI. I want to do something even like lower of a res. I think that would be a lot of fun. See, this is the thing where I, I'm not getting enough contrast in this dark blue, so I'm going to... to push that down a bit more because I do want to see those brush strokes even though it's kind of can't really see them maybe I'll push up the the lighter blue so I get a bit of color more color because the whole idea of doing this process is to make it look kind of more painterly than it is yeah soften these edges so it looks less like a model oh blue names never finished Kathy Rain I, I need to get back to it. Ha, Chris Gwen says, as an indie dev playing game suddenly feels like a job. <laughs> I feel like, I guess for me, I, when I when I try to play games, I'm, oops, I'm thinking of it like a research. <laughs> like, what, what can I steal in terms of ideas? And it even stuff like playing the old stuff, like playing Personal Nightmare, you get a real, you get a real handle on, oh my gosh, the inventory system in this is is very painful, and I hope not to do that to other people. So I mean, you can learn good and bad lessons playing stuff. Yeah, never mind my my computer screen going black as I save. It'll be it'll be just fine. I hope. And I feel like there is a lot to learn from those older games. Because yeah, I learn a lot from what I feel like what feels kind of clunky or or you know, it feels um troublesome. Please work. Please don't stop working. Don't stop stop work. Don't stop. Stop working. I mean, I hear, I, I, I did purchase Disco Elysium, I have not cracked it open, but um, I hear that they, they have a really interesting inventory system that isn't quite inventory, so I, I, need, I need to take a look at that. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to take a little bit of a break while my computer decides if it wants to keep, you know, working with me or if it wants to just take a bit of a break. Don't stop never stopping, there we go. Uh oh. Eek. Ah, oh, Grindislav says the difference between 720p and 1080p isn't enough to make it worth going higher, in my opinion. I think it's really cool that you've really been pushing it and pushing it, Grindislav. Yeah, I, I mean, I would not. Like, I don't... Oh, man, I can't imagine how much work it is. It's like four times the amount of work to work at that resolution. Fluke, it's Happy Crimson Couture's Day! Uh, my computer... Oh, my gosh, my computer's having a bit of a time. Come back. At least I, I think I'm still streaming. Um... Probably. <laughs> I'm gonna ask in chat. Am I still streaming? <laughs> Cause I don't know. Okay, okay, I'm still streaming. Okay, just a black screen. 
Okay. Well, this worked last time. Maybe I just can't save. Oh, you know what the problem is? It's probably saving to my Google Drive. Uh, oh, now it's white. Okay. Clip Studio Paint not responding. Okay, wait. Uh, wait for a program to respond. Um, let's, give, let's give it a moment to just catch its breath. Yes, I, I, that's something I completely ov overlooked, is I have to... Oh, I think it's back. Oh yeah, see, it's just thinking. We'll give it a second. Um, I'm going to take this, this second that we have now, just while we're waiting for that to happen. It said, let's look at the time. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting there. Okay, 8.33. Okay, I'm going to just give it a break. I'm going to let it run. I will show a, a, um, a book. Even though there's no one who did a redemption, I still feel like I want to show you something, so I'm going to show you a book. While we're waiting for my computer. And then, yeah, as soon as it comes back, I will be saving to my desktop. Yes, Lucas says, I know the problem. You need to upgrade from a 4-hamster wheel computer to an 8-hamster wheel computer. Don't let them sleep. Okay, thank you, Grindislav, for show a fun book. Arabello, good evening. Good to see you again. We are just waiting for... Um, Clip Studio Paint to, to finish saving because it's it's it. I think I'm saving to my Google Drive, which is not a good idea when you're streaming. Let's look at this. This is a um and actually let's oh yeah and, and also of course the background that you're seeing behind me. That's this is the first environment that I made for my, for this uh, project, which is this spaceship kitchen. But let us um, turn off the chroma key for a second, and I will show you this book. And hopefully by the time I finish showing the book, we can go back to Clip Studio Paint and fix what we need to fix. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The redeem thing, I think if you click on the points thing by the... onto the left of the message thing, you can do stuff. Okay, book time. Cook Korean by Robin Ha. I love this cookbook. I really like Korean food. Korean food is amazing. And this is great. And I, what I love about this one is that it is beautifully illustrated I love drawings of food and the fact that this particular book has drawings of food and drawings of the process and it's adorable I love it I love it so much oh Arabella says how many projects are you currently working on um I am currently working on I'm just focusing on this for now um, although while I was working on this, I was working on some other stuff that hopefully will be coming, will be announceable soon enough. But, um, I'm, it's mo it, now that that other thing is over, and, and this, this is the last week of, of, um, this, this project, this, oh, look at this. Look at that, go it's gorgeous. Water, I love watercolor. Love it. Um, but yeah, um, when I, when I finish with this contract, I'm going to be back on the Crimson Diamond. There's a few other little things I'm working on here and there. Uh, so, but those aren't really full-time things. It's just, um, kind of a la carte stuff I, I, I have to do. I have to get um, work, back working on. But, um, there's always extra stuff. I mean, there's never 100% Crimson Diamond, but it's going to be like 90% Crimson Diamond stuff after this project. So yes, I've only made, I think, one thing in this cookbook, though. Uh, made this this one here. That's why there's a bookmark. Sweet potato noodles. Japchai. I love Japchai. I've made this, I think, once, and it was amazing. Yes. Yeah, just a Jeffy. We always end up talking about food. And yes, yes, Chris Gwynn, I have read this for fun, this whole book. Because it's gorgeous. And like at the very beginning, there's a Korean meal guide of like the different things you would expect. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. It's my favorite kind of a cookbook. You need a cookbook with pictures, but that's that. So that's Cook Korean by Robin Ha, a comic book for recipes. So that is um that is our book. That is our book redemption. So thank you, Grinislav, for the redemption. 
Yes, Stobot Snitch, I've got a couple issues of Oishimbo. They, they are, they, they, they're like manga about like food and food culture in Japan. And I can show a couple of those if someone does another food redemption. I have, um, I can, br I've got two um, issues and I can show those. And those are gorgeous too. Just a Jeffy love Korean food. Drawback is working from home. No good Korean <laughs> restaurants in my neighborhood. Oh, Flukas, it's my pleasure to show you guys. I love books so much. And so it's, I love to show the, all the books I have. Oh, Deluxe Lux, you have that, this, the Korean cookbook as well. Awesome! Uh, have you ever made anything from it? Um, let me let me check in on... Oh! Clip Studio Paint! How's Clip Studio Paint doing? Um, come come back. Clip Studio Paint. Uh oh, it's still saving, you guys. It's still saving. Fractal Mind Mike! Thanks for the sub! Awesome, awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's like beyond 50% now. So do you guys do that thing where you kind of... You try to line up where the progress bar is. It's between like the N and the G. Okay, so um, we're gonna... <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Gwyndalf, I have read this book, but I, I, I've only made one recipe in it. Um... <laughs> And I pretty much read the whole thing from beginning to end. Chris Gwynn, I have not made my own kimchi. My mom has made her own kimchi, though. And, and we're a big kimchi kimchi place. Uh, <laughs> you just did a, re a red book redemption. <laughs> oh, that's very good, Grindislav. A red book redemption. Nice. Oh, hi, Bree! Hazard, thank you so much for the bits. Awesome! Uh, how's it going? It's been a minute. How are you doing these days? Uh, yeah, it's 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 been busy. Like I've been working on this this project full time, and right now it's just in the process of saving. So I'm just kind of tap dancing to kill time until it's saved all the way. Because I um, I unwisely have been have been saving to my Google Drive, and now because I'm streaming and everything, the Google Drive is is resentful. Oh, nice, Lucas. Thanks for the pits. So you're doing well. Hybrid, hybrid has it. I hope you're doing well too. Are you streaming? What have you been streaming lately? I've been streaming Clip Studio Paint lately and Blender a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take a quick peek at my progress bar. But yeah, I'm. I'm. This is my last week working on this Blender and Clip Studio Paint stuff, and then after that, I will be working back on Crimson Diamond. For most of my time, like 85 to 90% of my time will be that. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Fractal Mind Mike. Thank you so much for the bits. Holy cow, you guys. I'm, I, I'm just, I can do nothing but apologize for how slowly this... Oh, you know what? It is saving you guys. It's just really slow. Because it's not between the N and the G anymore. It's like way beyond the letters. So I can't even... In fact, I, I think I could show you. So you guys can see. See, it's going. It's going. See, if I put my mouse cursor right there... Oh, see? It's going. It's almost done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fractal Mike. Thank you much, so, so much, Hybrid Hazard Flukas, for the bits as well. Thank you for everyone for your patience, because this is taking a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, when I, when I bought this machine, I was not really planning on streaming um, 3D stuff. Although this isn't the 3D stuff. Yeah! <laughs> Hyperhazard, thank you for the bits as well. Again, you feel bad for not giving the full hundred so I can kick off a hype train. I don't know how hype trains work, you guys, but thank you. I, I know that they're a good thing. So thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but yes, when we come back to streaming, so I'm not streaming next week, but the week after I'll, uh, I'll be streaming. Maybe or maybe not Dan. I don't actually wait. I don't think Dan will be around. But uh, we will be back with Pixels, we'll be back with EGA, we'll be back with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, so this is this is probably going to be the last time I, I'm streaming Blender. Oh, see, I can put my, my cursor over here just to make sure, see how fast it's going. And yeah, and, and we'll be kind of back to our usual routine. And yeah, I cannot wait to get back to stuff that is like my, my stuff that I'm used to. <laughs> yeah, um, I think this game will be... I think it's called Strange Dungeon now. Um, I think that's the name Ilya settled on. But it's supposed to be launching sometime this year, I think. 
Oh wow, okay. Hyper Hazard says one more person needs to sub give to sub or give a hundred bits to start a hype train. So hyper hazard, do you I don't know um if can someone explain to me what a hype train is? Okay, so <laughs> wow, Amberzine, holy cow. Okay, so hype train incoming, so that's a hype train. Thank you guys, thank you, thank you. While while we sit here, is, is there no more of an Oh, you have limited season what? You have limited something to seasonal emotes? What is this? Available rewards. Okay. <laughs> Judith Butler's lover asks, was the reason you didn't stream last week that Dan escaped the basement and you had to hunt him down with a stun gun? <laughs> yeah, Dan, Dan is a slippery fellow. He just, you know, we said, I, I thought that he was done up pretty good, but, you know, he just wiggled right out. Holy cow, just a Jeffy. Just thank you so much for the... Holy cow, I don't... See, I, I'm so grateful for you guys. I don't fully understand what's happening, but I am super, super, super grateful. Okay, basically if a lot of... Okay, Gomansama says, basically, if a lot of folks donate bits or sub in a set amount of time, they get exclusive emotes. I don't even know if there are exclusive emotes for you guys to get. Okay, and also it's money. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Hybrid. How come... Is it, is it moving anymore? I, I swear, this must be the most boring stream you guys have probably seen in a while. It's literally watching a progress bar fill up. Should I cancel? We're so close. Should I cancel the save and just save to my desktop? Yeah, just a Jeffy, you don't know that as well? Exploring and lots of stuff to learn. Yeah, that's another thing I told myself I'd learn. Oh, Arabella, thanks so much for the sub. Thank you so much for the sub. Holy cow. I don't even have tier 2 emotes. I haven't made any. I'm so sorry. The progress bar stream is give Okay, grouping. Okay. Let's see. It is 8.45 now. In three minutes, if the progress bar has not moved, I will cancel. So that's 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 um that's real like real-time drama that we're experiencing. In fact, I'm on Mike. Yes, thank you so much for your support, you guys. Um it's it's wonderful and <laughs> super motivating and yeah it's just everyone's so nice <laughs> greatness laugh says i find a certain joy in watching progress bars fill up i think it's a remnant from a napster <laughs> yay it like did that last 10 percent super duper quick okay before we forget save ass Yeah, let's save to desktop. Let's save to desktop. Oh my lord. Yes, okay. Yay! <laughs> now let's watch another hopefully much faster progress bar. Uh, hot saving action. Good to see you, Beta Human Studio. Look how much faster that is, you guys. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, Judah Butler's library. I found a certain terror in watching progress bars it's a remnant from badly burned game cds uh yeah i think as with most things i usually take the negative and i just think oh gosh yeah this it's super stressful how do you like that and we're we're cooking with gas yeah it's telex tanks yeah exactly put the cursor on one side of the bar and cheer when the bar reaches the other side <laughs> yes okay so another thing that I've been trying to do with these, with these, um, painting over these things is trying to soften up these edges so they don't look as, um, oh, that's a bit too light. So they don't look as, um, perfectly sharp, you know? They don't need to be that. Uh, just a Jeffy asked, how many bits do we need to get to the next level? Um... Completing level 3 requires combined support events totaling 5 tier 1 subs or 2100 bits. That's what that says. Whoa, okay. It didn't, oh, it didn't uh, update that. Okay, so it's, uh, it's at 76%. I don't know how much of this you're, you're, you guys are privy to, but it says level 3 hype train. So I guess... I'm not sure how many more bits, like, I'm assuming 1100 more bits for the level 3 hype train, but yeah, I don't even know if you guys are getting anything out of it, to be honest, because I, 
I, I've been shirking my development. Oh, oh. Okay, so that's, yeah, that'll do it. Hero Superior, thank you. Oh my gosh. Level 3 is complete, thank you. Hero of Shapir. You are a true hero of Shapir. Thank you, thank you guys. No, like, I know I'm so sorry I had to uh, cancel stream last minute, last week. Um, but you guys are like more than making up for it this week. Because I, I enjoy being here with you guys so much. So thank you, thank you. You are getting joy out of it, hero of Shapir. I am getting joy out of this so much fractal mind mike thank you so much for, again for the bits for more bits getting a start on that level four hive train yes you're now a paladin exactly hero shapir oh wow deluxe Sucks says i haven't been here in a while because my life has been a wild lately so it's just comforting to be here i'm honestly <laughs> i'm super comforted to be here too i will say that i don't like getting mushy but i do this, yeah, I mean, especially nowadays, because I'm pretty much, I don't go very many places now. It's, it's, um, super important to me to have you guys around once a week, hang out, get minimal, <laughs> get minimal amounts of work done, but, it, you know, it's better than nothing, and it's about the friends that we hang out with, not, to me, as much as getting actual work done. And Arabella, you enjoy being here, here as well, I I'm so glad. I'm so glad, you know? Um, Twitch has been a real pleasant surprise for me. Oh, Judith Bose Lover says, Unrelated, but I lost my display tab at Glove while moving. I spent an hour burrowing through boxes. Ah, in Croatia, there's a legend that tiny house spirits that steal your stuff when you're not looking. I'm beginning to believe. Oh, wow. Hybrid Hazard, thank you so much for gifting the sub. And yes, I hope things calm down for you as well. Deluxe talks to JBL says the same. Yeah, life, uh, life in... Life is... I was going to say life is a highway. <laughs> but that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, life can be a bit of a go of it. So I'm really hoping that things uh, calm down for you. Ooh, that's nice. Maybe I'll get bolder with this. Um, and really start blending some stuff out. The year is half over, you guys. And I still distinctly remember being at uh, PAX East in Boston in 2019 in like the end of february like uh yeah the end of february i think and i was whining to dave gilbert that the year was already half over in february because that's the kind of person i am <laughs> oh just a jeffy that's a that's a nice um perspective the year is half started everything thank you for gifting this up to deluxe tux thank you so much thank you thank you thank you I really appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone who's here, like lurking or not lurking. I love hearing when people say they, you know, work while they're, while they're watching. Because that's what I try to do when I'm watching other streams. The year is half started, not half over. I know, I'm such like, I'm kind of a... I'm kind of a glasses half empty type of person. <laughs> but I don't even think that's necessarily a bad thing because it kind of means that you kind of anticipate difficulties and then you try to be really well prepared. So that's how I see it. And that's true. We haven't seen we haven't seen Bill in in, in around and and uh, sharing his um projects his retro projects i hope his replacement of that compact keyboard is going okay uh beta human studio i yeah i have not played the old skies demo i don't know if it's still like active right now but i know it was um last week it was up but yeah i was kind of like really crazy busy last week and so busy i wasn't able to stream and so i kind of missed out 
If it's still if it's still around, I'm maybe I can. Apparently, emotes are being delivered to supporters, um, but I, I, your guess is as good as mine as to what those might be. Ah, uh, Fractal Mind Mike as well. Yes, you too. You always anticipate problems before benefits. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, there's we need both types of people in the world, I think. So I'm not even going to sweat it too much because that's just my natural tendency. But yeah, I mean, we kind of try to anticipate eventuality and uh, be prepared for them. That's not a bad way to be. Choo-choo. I uh, see, that's one of them, yeah. Just a Jeffy, when they said, like, uh, emotes would be available for the hype train, uh, yeah, it was that dog w with the little scarf and the tongue sticking out, which is pretty darn cute. I feel like I want to add another color to that, but I do like to p compare... Yeah, you can just see I'm trying to add more personality to what's there. Oh, good. You got the you got that emo. Yeah, that one I certainly made. Yeah, there are a few of those. Like, there's a Nancy Maple emo. Oh no, what happened? Okay, um, there is a Nancy Maple emote. There is also yeah, I, I've made a few emotes. Oops, I didn't make the, the laughing robot one. I just my finger went wrong. Oh, it was the parrot another one? Another bonus one. Ah, hi, very hazard reading. Show a fun book. Fifteen hundred, absolutely. So what? I'll take this opportunity to see. So yes, to save. But then we are also going to um, go back to this view, and I will show another fun book. And I'm actually not sure if I showed this one again before. I did I? I don't know if I did. So you guys yell at me if you've seen this one before. Okay, this one is... Thank you, by the way, Hybrid Hazard, for the redemption. This one is... Um, oh, I should turn that off. I was hoping that because it's a black and white book, it wouldn't mess with the chroma key. But have I shown my World of Edward Gorey book? My first exposure to Edward Gorey's illustrations was the Mystery Theater opening introduction, the animated introduction he created for something called Mystery Theater... I think it might have been on PBS. Oh, Fractal Mind Mike, yeah, you're, 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 um, you're going to lurk and work? Okay, so I'm just going to show you quickly uh, some of these illustrations in here. Hold on. So we're talking really gorgeous, nuanced um, pen and ink drawing. Super mysterious and ominous and classy. Oh, Struggles next year first was Ghastly Crumb Tinies. Yeah, Edward Gorey is an amazing... was. He, he didn't die that, rec uh, that that long ago, actually. Edward Gorey uh, was an amazing American illustrator. And yeah, he did this... If you could probably find it on the internet, this PBS intro for this mystery series. And it was super... It super caught my eye when, it, when I was a kid. And then I kind of, you know, saw that. And I think it might have played before, like, Poirot or Colombo or something um, in the house. And it was really creepy and scary, and it really freaked me out. And then I kind of forgot about Edward Gorey for a long time. And I think my second exposure was Gashley Crumb Tiny's, in fact. And so he's done all kinds of stuff. He's done like stage design as well. But his mystery stuff in particular is really, really wonderful stuff. Um, oh, something like this even. It's a bit of a splash of color. Another story I really like about Edward Gorey is that he used a very particular uh, style of pen, a pen nib for his illustrations, and he just hoarded boxes and boxes of them. Like, look how look look at this line work, the delicate shading, and there's something about it that's kind of suffocating and ominous, and it's so mystery theater, really. Yeah, Stubblestone. Yeah, the PBS intro. I was so scared of it. Oh, here's a beautiful one that is, that's got some watercolor in it. So you can see it's got a very specific look and feel. Wonderful, wonderful work. I'm a huge fan. I've got more books than, than this of his. But this was, this is definitely my favorite. Um, he's a cat person. So here's a picture of Edward Gorey. 
and his one of his cats. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. I I I I've always been more of a. I, I've said this to you guys before. I've always been more of a drawer than a painter, and so I really get drawn to. Um, I get drawn to illustrations that are kind of lin like line based. Another gorgeous spread. Like look at this. There's so much texture going on here. Really, really wonderful. <laughs> it's like a more dour terror project. Ooh, Jesse Jeffy, you're gonna try out things in the style of Edward Gorey in the Mid Journey beta. Mid Journey? Oh, that is that. Yeah, the the a AI um, art stuff. Yes, yeah, going on some every time I I, I um, look at Edward Gorey's work. I um, I end up wanting more Edward Gorey books. And yeah, I do actually have the Gashley Crumb Tiny's poster, too. I bought that in college. And he was a big fan of the uh, ballet. He would go all the time. He lived in New York, I think. But yeah. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. And yeah, it has a lot to do with, you know, my love of mystery stories and uh, mystery books, mystery shows. My mom loves mystery stuff. And so that's why we were watching the mystery series on PBS is because she that was something that she always loved and still does to this day. And it's just, it's really nice to have that, you know, connection and I'm making a mystery a mystery game as well so yeah so thank you again hybrid hazard for the redemption um but yes i know that uh, I, I i love looking at art like that and even the cookbook too because it makes me just want to draw more and i think that's always a good a good uh, impulse so going back to our drawer yeah and it just i like to check back in with it and just see um the difference that this is making i should we'll probably do the handle next and sometimes like this actually is not really that good of an example of some of the gradations and stuff you would i would do like in this area you can see it's more painterly here um, this is a very geometric shape so there's not a lot to do in terms of like gradations so much or anything or anything particularly cool although i can and it's i also am trying to like make this not look as like uniform either so i should kind of do more with that maybe i'd introduce new colors i will um i will go back into this stuff and make it more painterly but uh, for the moment i'm just gonna i'm just trying to get that basic layer down <sighs> oh hi Bray hazard i love your guinea pig emotes are those your actual guinea pigs because they do look familiar and ballet dances are the most some of the most intense people, people alive, Judith Butler's lover. <laughs> I don't actually know any um, ballet dancers personally, but I thought Black Swan was a lot of fun of a movie. Um... Trying to paint this and like not be too perfect. My my problem with this process is that I tend to just yeah I just try to follow everything too closely, and it just ends up looking super mechanical. <laughs> yeah, Stubble says exactly. It's funny how stuff that scares us as kids can stick with us and become something we love later in life. Yes, in fact, I now that I think about it, I'm thinking that I saw that. Um, I saw that exact opening, that that uh, Edward Gorey mystery opening, and I I think it was for a Columbo episode where he it's got to do with like a magician and the magician murder had a, it used the guillotine and I was really freaked out by it and it's still yeah definitely still stuck with me. <laughs> Judith Butler's lover, you say Black Swan might as well have been a documentary. Oh my goodness.
It's one of those films which I did like at the time, but it, I don't know if I'd want to see it again necessarily because he yeah, had it's kind of um, anxiety-inducing, <laughs> really. But really super effective. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, uh, you can see like the floor that I did is a, has a lot less, um, it's a lot, ooh, what's, it's like a weird line here. Oh well, it's not a huge deal. Um, oh. Just try to make this look a little bit more rough. I have Black Swan's a rom-com dude, but was lover. A Disaster Squad, welcome to chat. Admire your attention to backgrounds. I feel like I always skim on those. I make indie games on Steam, but they're 320 by 240 style. Disaster Squad, this is like completely out of my wheelhouse. I don't... Um, yeah, oh crap. <laughs> That's the eraser. Uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, this is my first foray into doing this kind of a thing, and it's really difficult. <laughs> If you want Disaster Squad, please link, throw a link to your one of your Steam pages or your Steam developer page, so you, we can um, all enjoy. Because my my love is the 320 by 240 resolution. We were talking about resolution a little bit earlier, and that's the stuff that I, I enjoy the most. And as soon as um, this week is over, I will be going back to my uh, my safe, happy place. Of 320 by 240. Yeah, Neon Totem, you agree? Aronof Aronofsky movies. I like that. Great to watch once. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's a there's some of them that, that just did not look fun, so I just never watched them. Like Mother had a gorgeous, gorgeous movie poster by James Jean. Beautiful, but I'm like, I don't want to see that movie. That looks really stressful. <laughs> and I he did, did he do Solaris the remake? Because that looks like really cool, but I didn't see that either, actually. Um, what else has he done? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Darren Aronofsky. Um, oh, Pi. He did Pi. Which I, did he do Pi? I really like Pi. That, and that, um, that Clint Mansell soundtrack for Pi was incredible. But yeah, it's just, you don't want to watch it again. Oh, Mouse Miss, yes, Pi. Ah, uh, ah, uh, disaster, disaster Squad, your um, childhood inspiration to the last half of darkness and uninvited. Did you play all of the last half of darkness games? Because I played um, the first part of last half of darkness, the first game, but I never played the second half that you needed to register for. I, f I finished the first half of the last half of darkness on, on stream. But I know there's like s five or six or seven or eight of those games. You can get them on, on uh, Steam. But there is really there's there's something about that that color palette, the use of those blues, and the and the limited use of other colors to really make objects stand out that I really 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 like. Okay, oh disaster and also disaster squad. You know that yeah, I, I'm usually a, a ditherer, <laughs> literally a ditherer. Yeah, I, I'm sorry that this that this filing cabinet is really not more interesting to watch get painted. Because even these yellow, the yellow little cubbies were more interesting to watch if, if it came to it. Oh, okay, Mr. V, that was Steven Soderbergh. Oh, okay, and Requiem for Doom, I know, is a famous one. I've not seen it, but people say that's one you'd only want to watch once. Oh, oh, yeah, Disaster Squad, if you want to link to your, like, a Steam page of yours which shows some of your games, please do. Because I'm always, I'm always super interested on, um, oh, about, um, 320 by 240 games. That's like my favorite. That's my favorite um, resolution. So yeah, if you want to drop your link down there, if you have any link to any of your games, that'd be awesome. Ah, oh, just a Jeff, you worked on an Aronofsky film, The Fountain. I haven't seen that one either. I feel like I might have only seen maybe two Aronofsky movies. Come to think of it. Oh wow, Cerebral Scene says Requiem for Dream had one of the most amazing websites you've seen. Do this. So yeah, I'm wondering 
they still they still do like um like movie tie-in websites I, I've never really been one to visit them Well, Flukas, this is not this is not in uh, TCD. This is for um, a game that I think is going to be called Strange Dungeon that a friend of mine is making. Um, so something completely different, and I'm I'm kind of been making the environments for it at least this, these past couple weeks for like a basically a couple months altogether. Um, I've done some character stuff as well. Um, in fact, I could probably show some of that stuff. Oh, Disaster, Squ Disaster Squad asks, aren't you a big fan of Fran Bow? I have not played Fran Bow Disaster, Disaster Squad. That's another one I have to get around to. The Fountain is a very stylistic film. Jester Jeffrey says, required a lot of VFX work. Yeah, I, I, w I think I'd like to see that because it does look like it's pretty cool. Oh no, you watched it on a plane, Masimus? Oh, dear first dungeon. Okay, yeah, so other stuff I've done for this game. Uh, this. Like my computer wants more to do. To do. Oh no, what? That's not what I wanted. What happened? Oh, it just... Oh, great, awesome, thank you so much. I can open that in a new tab. It's always nice to have, you know, to, to have indie devs, fellow indie devs. Awesome, thank you, thank you. And open that in Safari, take a look at it later. Indie devs on stream, thank you. Ooh, Cursed 2. Oh, it's free to play, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Oh, wow, I just saw some cool status thing. And I do like the... Oh, I like your inventory. I like your inventory. Okay, I can't... And so this is the other stuff I would working on for the game. So this, the, the character um, you see on the far right is what Ilya made. And so I was kind of, um, I needed to kind of make stuff in that si a similar type of a uh, style. So that's, these are some of the characters I made. I made a, I made a muffin crab, I made uh, like these weird mushrooms, and then I made this mushroom thing that's other mushrooms. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, Disaster Squad. Yeah, uh, the Colonel's Bequest. There's like the Laura Bow series. Yeah, yeah. I definitely have, have played through those, and, I, and, and they're like my favorite thing ever. Well, in terms of art and the fact that they're mysteries, my favorite. One of my favorite things. In fact, tonight, um, if we catch him, we're going to be watching. Um, we're going to be raiding Robot Spacer because Robot Spacer has been has been streaming. He's been streaming. Um, Colonel's Bequest. So he played it all the way through once, completely like fresh, like he's never played them before, which is a, it's always a treat to watch someone play one of those games for the first time. And he did really well, like way better than I'd ever done. And takes excellent notes and makes amazing maps. And now he's kind of playing it through a few times just to see how much better he can do on it, like mastering it. So we're going to raid him if we get the chance. He's done amazingly well. Lighter. Nope. There you go. Ah. Well, 
That's a bit softer. Yeah, so let's just do a quick comparison. Yeah. Even still, I mean, it's still pretty close to what's there, but... Is the suits of armor in the lower bow series. Yeah, one thing about the lower bow series that I did not really do duplicate for Colonel, uh, Crimson Diamond is, yeah, there's not a lot of um, death. There's not the same like emphasis on death and uh, missing stuff. At least I hope not. What's in the file cabinet, just to Jeffrey, you ask? Um, just papers. Like, this place is, um, it's just gonna be like a mess of paper, really. So the, yeah, the, um, there's stacks of paper, there's gonna be paper readouts. I'm gonna need to put stuff on these monitors eventually. It still looks dismayingly like the model to me. I just, every, every so often, I have to, like, kind of slap on the finished render just to know that, yeah, I'm actually putting more personality into it than is there. But uh, it seems so subtle, but I know it does make a difference. Oh, well, Holson, I'm glad you think this place this place looks cool. I feel like I need to like loosen up with it though, you know? Like I feel like I need to get more painterly with it. And I think it's just a matter of being like comfortable with the style maybe when it I still feel like I'm just still learning it so much. Yeah, Stobelsnitz, I am using 3D to render the scenes and that will be 2D in the yeah, 2D in the final game, yes. And I've been told that that's kind of what Disco Elysium did, but like far more elaborately. <laughs> so that's kind of um Oh I missed I missed painting this properly. So that's kind of what we're going for. Like not not like Disco Elysium, but you know, that process of basing the environment on a model so that the lighting looks kind of okay. Yeah, Disaster, Disaster Squad, I, like, I also like watching what other indie people are doing. It's just, for me, my problem is that when I'm, like, watching streams, I'm trying to, um, like, work at the same time, so I can't, I need to, I feel like when I'm watching other indies, I want to pay more attention to what they're doing, and I feel like I can't when I'm working. Because then I have to, I'll end up not working and just watch them. So I usually end up watching like retro streamers. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's almost, it's, it's a whole like workflow thing. Um, that I think um, I think there's a benefit to it. It's just uh, it's a matter of just getting more comfortable with it and getting to getting faster about it. Um. And also, like, just me, like, I'm not still really that good at it, and so I'm trying to add more personality in to it when I know I, I can I have more license with it because of how the uh, environments look. In fact, if we look back at um, this environment that's behind me... Uh, oh, crap. That's not what I wanted to move. 
this one. Nope. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. Let me um, just lock that up. Um, Logitech webcam. There it is. Okay, so this thing. So uh, I, in the foreground, I tried to um, just add some color randomly here and there because I was really being too close with it in terms of what it should look like. But uh, I think that that comes with time. Oh, I don't know why my... Um, Oh good, Disaster Squad, exactly. Same, you're literally making a, a game background right now while listening. Nice. Okay, that's exactly what I want, what I want to hear. Yeah, I don't know, this, this could be better. But leave this for now. And then also, like, um, I have a separate... Separate layers for the, the shadows. Because I want to make sure that the shadow is... Going to be accurate. Ah, oh, interesting, Strobel says. I think it was Crowns and Pawns that did their game kind of painterly, but they also kept it in 3D. Yes, Crowns and Pawns, they showed at the Adventure X that uh, I showed the Crimson Diamond at. And honestly, I feel really like I need to go over all the games that were in that showcase and just see how many of them have already launched, and I haven't, <laughs> so I can make myself feel bad. Because I think most of them have. Like, Tangle Tower was at that showcase in 2019. Um, Crowns and Pawns was... Um, Backbone was, <laughs> and all these games have launched. The Longing was there. Was the Longing there? No, maybe the Longing wasn't there. I think... Maybe it was. I can't remember anymore. Astro Astrologaster um, launched. <laughs> I unlocked an opening open file cabinet. Seems suspicious to me. A deluxe text, yeah, it's Tinkle Toe. It actually was on sale recently, I think. Um, and I can't remember if I have it or not, like if I bought it yet. But it's a really cool looking game. I should, yeah. I, sh I In fact, why don't we do that? Oh, this part is also, I already did this stuff too. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we look at... Hold on, let me find it. So just let me change to Big Julia View for a second. And I'm going to look for the 2019 uh, Adventure X Showcase, and I will <laughs> see which ones have. Oh, Jesuit Jeffy! Redeem showed a fun book. Awesome, I will. That person wants you too. Good to see you. Welcome back. Ooh, still such I think my game might be getting into Gamecom, which is exciting. It's the only thing I've really had it in besides Stream Next, Steam Next Fest. Stribblesons, if you want to um, um, drop drop your link uh, drop your link if you have one into chat, please do. <clears throat> Let me just find Ad Adventure X 2019. Hold on. And then I will do the book after I just look at the Adventure X 2019 showcase. <laughs> games. Where are the games? That wasn't it. Twenty nineteen. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, so alright, let me um Okay, can you see can you see the uh the the web browser page? Thank you, the frog, stubble snitch. Oops. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, and of course, anyone, any like game dev that's in chat right now, ooh, where'd I go? Please, please, please. Yeah, um, you can drop. Feel free to drop your your links and stuff. Oh my god, I just did. It. I just closed my own chat like twice. Ugh. I just did it again. How do I? Uh, I'm trying to close the sidebar and it's nothing. Okay. Right. Okay. So, 
What do we have here? The Crimson Diamond has not launched. Okay, what else? Okay, Sumatra Fate of Yandi has launched. Backbone has launched. Alcinor has launched. TikTok a tale for two, I'm not sure. Astrologaster, yes. Superluminary, I think so. Ring of Fire, I think so. Ladderhead had... Oh, the Longing was there. Yeah, Ladderhead launched. Longing is launched. Metropolis is launched. Ord. Um, Ord, I think, was already finished. It was a small game. It was really cool. Juggler's Tale, I don't know. Inspector Waffles has launched. After Hours, I think. Haiku Adventure, I don't know. Okay, TikTok launched. Okay. Va Vagris, The Riven Realms, I don't know. Once Upon a Crime in the West, I don't know. 30 Birds, I don't know. Crowns and Pawns is launching soon. Tangle Tower launched. Lost Medallion Aurora, did it launch? I can't remember. Because we're here. So some of them I don't know. But how many are, are how many are here? So out of um, one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five. That's six. Twenty-four. There's twenty-six games here. Okay, Aurora not launched. Okay, out of twenty-six games, um, how many have launched? Uh, one, two, three. F I think this one has Ring of Fire. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. At least 12 of them have launched. I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay. Um, back to... Um, back to painting. Oh, Ring of Fire has not. Okay. So we know 12 of the 26 have confirmed as launched. At least... I think Ord was pretty much done. So that's probably 13. We will get there. It's gonna happen. Like I'm, I know it will. I'm confident that it will. It's just a matter of when. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Fun book. Just a Jeffy. Yes. Still figuring this stuff out. But figured if I have a lot of points, what would Julia do if I redeemed show a fun book like thirty times all at once? <laughs> I just have to like move the camera and show you the bookshelf. Okay, but you did. I'm so sorry. Thank you for reminding me, Jessica Jeffy. I will show a fun book. Show 30 fun books. <laughs> it's just nothing but showing books, which can happen. Um, yeah, so let me, as I'm saving, uh, yeah, why don't we show a fun book? We'll show a fun book. Oh, wait. Um, video capture device. Is this one? It's not this one. Uh,. Video capture device? Which one is it? Now I gotta find... I locked it. I locked the layer. Oh, nope. It's not it. Nope. This one. It's not this one? What's going on? I can't... It, um... Oh, Lodge Tap Wilkham. This one. Yes, that's me. Okay. Um, 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 um... Filters. Okay, yes, we are going to do another book. <laughs> Sterbolt says your fun books would cost me too much if I had disposable income. They're in a wish list just waiting. Oh, so you are looking these up. Interesting. Okay. We're going to do another fun book. We're going to do another fun book. Have I shown... I must have... I think I showed that one. Okay, I'm not going to show that one. Ooh... Did I show this one? Maybe I haven't shown this one. Okay. So, let me turn off the chroma key. Why didn't it turn off? What happened? Close. Okay. Here we go. Fun book time. So, I, I don't know if this is a common thing in all of North America or what, but in Canada we have these scholastic book fairs. And it would be in the library, and they would put the books out on a table. And, you know, we'd actually get these um, little, like, newsprint, printed on newsprint, like these like thin little newsletters of the upcoming books. And um, you could also, like, there's also, like, a table that you could see books on as well. And you could, like, pick books that you want to order from this classic book thing. Yes, okay, so the Lux Talks, you had this as well. Okay, yeah, and so I think this one in particular... 
I did not order from the, the, the little like the little newsletter thing, but I did see it because it caught my eye on the table because you can sometimes like see samples of the books on the tables. So I picked this one up. It's not really like much of a book and I can't believe this was even there. But there was 80 classic PC hits, Game Players Encyclopedia of PC Games Volume 2. Look at this thing. Okay, just a Jeffy Scholastic book for us all the time. As a kid, it's awesome. As a parent, it's kind of annoying. This, I love this so much. Because what you get in here... You would have totally grabbed this. You get these beautiful long-form reviews of Stellar 7. What is this? Bushbuck, Charms, Viking, Ships, and Dodo Eggs. And these, are, these writers, actually, I think, um, were writers from... Who wrote about um like they were in computer gaming world and stuff like that so here's a beautiful double page spread on jones in the fast lane <laughs> i probably played all these <laughs> did you save showing that book to you just a jeffy uh, wait just a jeffy you you actually um you redeemed this right uh colonel's bequest look at this colonel's bequest it's got all the greats. It's got all the greats. Look at the back of this. The back of this is an ad for Might and Magic 3. Jones is actually kind of fun. Okay, you're eating with your grade school often had a list of books. Good way to get excited, kids excited about books. I think I got an illustrated book of Edgar Allan Poe. I, I love these. I still have a lot of my Scholastic books. Heart of China. Oh, look, and also there's like um, Eye of the Beholder over here. I've read this. Like, I don't know if I read this. Like, look at this. The Heart of China one is quite long. Look at this. The Heart of China one's like four, four pages. Like, you're not going to get this type of long form reviews in like on the internet anymore. Like, you're not going to get four pages of, written up of, of Heart of China. And then here, of course, is King's Quest Five. Color. <laughs> Yes, it's a, yes, I love it. Oh, wow, Deluxe Life, you just played Heart of China last year. I remember a friend of mine had it. What did you think of it? Because I quite liked it. <laughs> yes, what is that object made of printed screens? It's, a, it's like, these are, yeah, it's a book of um, screenshots. It's bound in thin sheets of pressed plant material. Yeah, like, here's Ultima 4. Oh, wait. I don't actually think I've read this whole thing cover to cover. But I've read mo like I've read the ones I was interested in. Like I've read this Ultima Five, uh, Ultima Six, False Prophet. I've read this like a lot, like so many times. I can't even count. In the cover, Jesse Jeffy. So there's different volumes of this. So this one's Volume Two. Game Players Encyclopedia of PC Games, Volume Two. Ah, so Deluxe Lex, it didn't. Some of it didn't age well. I think the actual the actual game design is quite interesting. Like balance of the planet. Like I need to go back and read some of these. This is one of the reasons I loved stuff like um, Computer Gaming World. Oh, look here's our um, Quest for Glory two. So this was the exact perfect one for me to get, because it has Colonel's Bequest, it has Quest for Glory two, it has King's Quest five, Space Quest four. But yeah, this one, so thank you very much for the redemption, just a Jeffy. And these are really well written articles. Like here's the one for Rise of the Dragon. Oh, these books are not too expensive. I've yeah, Betty Humans to do I pre I also pronounce Dynamics Dyna Dynamix. When I was a kid I also said Dynamix. Yes. Oh Leander uh Leandra Nux used to enjoy so much collecting magazines like this. Yes, I... This one is not even a magazine. This is some special edition of something. War of the Lance. You know, I, I don't know. So this so this got 80, 80 games in here. And yeah, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I love it to death. That's why I've kept it to this day. Codename Iceman. Like this. I love it. I love it. Okay, so thank you so much for the redemption. Actually, I'll give you a bonus on the redemption. Yeah, Disaster Squad. Yeah, Willie Beamish was totally dy dy Dynamics. Dynamics. I'll call it Dynamics because I always used to. War of the Lands. Yeah, Red Baron, Heart of China, Rise of the Dragon, Willie Beamish. Um, I'm going to give you a bonus magazine. Um, hold on. 
This was from a bit later, and this is actually, and considering this is pretty topical, I suppose. I think I, I, I tweeted this. Monkey Island. Chris of Monkey Island. Beautiful cover. Bonus time. Yeah. Double exclusive. Chris of Monkey Island. First in-depth look and exclusive playable demo. I don't know what happened to the, the disc. It must be somewhere, but yes. Plus Monkey Island 1 and 2 complete. Oh yeah, I do have this. I know where this is. This I actually have this in my Chris of Monkey Island box. So this came with Monkey Island 1 and 2 complete. Yeah. Beautiful. I used to love PC Gamer. I used to love Computer Gaming World. I used to have um, a subscription to Computer Gaming World for a long time. But uh, yeah, we've got... I want to show the front of this. Yeah, no more monkeying around. Yeah, that person wants to do... I miss gaming magazines like this so much, too. Yes, and Leandro next. I was totally, like, yeah, absolutely, completely... This is head for Duckman. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited, too. They're actually making Monkey Island 3. And Leandro next. I'm the same way. Like, when, when the game started up and the music started playing, it was a very emotional moment for me, too. Beta Human Studio, another computer gamer world, CGW fan. I wrote letters to, like, Scorpia. I wrote letters to, like, Jeff Green and stuff. When I think Jeff Green is on Twitter right now, actually. Um, <laughs> Stribble, since you got Family Computing Magazine and Nintendo Power. Oh, Evil Tentacle, good to see you. Welcome back. Cool game books. Art of Point and Click Adventure Games reprint is getting released on July 15th. Looking forward to getting that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I... There's only, like, that looked so cool. I didn't end up ordering that. Um, because it's just, there's too many awesome books to, to have. But yeah, this is stuff where it's, like, super well-written articles. Even the ads are fun. Oh, what's this? Tom Clancy's Polka? Oh. But yeah, anyway, that's your bonus. Your bonus magazine. I still have a lot of my old gaming magazines. I've got one that's got uh, a computer gaming world where the cover is um, uh, Bethesda Arena. What's it called? The Elder Scrolls Arena uh, uh, on the cover. And I have some old interactions that Sierra, Sierra magazine as well, which I read till the covers fell off, literally. Anyway, um, thank you for the, the redemption. Uh, special fondness disaster squad for um, goblins two and three. That's another thing. Like that, it's like a European game. And it feels like different from the stuff that we would get. And I love the pixel art in goblins, and I love the color palettes in those goblins games. Oh, you bought that book as well. Oh, the the art of point and click adventure. Game. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, I was so tempted. All right, so let's go back. Uh, Goblins too. You like it, uh, Leander Nix? You said uh, especially one of them does goofy, and the other one laughs. Yeah, I, I, I remember. I have. Uh, I think I must have all of them somewhere on some CD or other. But I, it's one of those things where you kind of. It's just way easier to buy them again than to look for them, really. Oh wow! Yeah, eating with you have several years of PC Gamer, when the when the magazines were lined up. It said PC Gamer across the spine. Love it. Yeah, I have the. Interaction, um, Computer Gamer World, some PC Gamer. Oh, my, go on with some. My pleasure. I love, I love sharing my the magazines and books and stuff. The goblins were adorable. Oh well, and, and Hybrid Hazard recently streamed. Goblins won. It seems, yeah, it's one of those things. Another one of those games where I did play it a little bit when I was, you know, a kid, but I uh, never really played them. Oh no, now things are broken. I never I never played them to like to finish them and stuff. I played them a bit and kind of just moved on to other things. But yeah, the, the humor in them is kind of amazing. Really, really... And I'm, I'm just so glad that so much of that stuff is still around to enjoy. Ugh. I try to really blend out these breast brush strokes, but I feel like I probably do that too much. And actually, this is going to be covered by paper, so I don't even know why I'm doing this. Oh, 
Ooh, Landernex. Yeah, I used to collect magazines from Spain in my own country, Argentina, like PC Wegos, later bought by PC Gamer. Okay, PC and CD ROM today. Oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. <laughs> oh, Disaster Squad asks Is there any materials you find annoying to draw? For me, it's wood. Metal. Reflective metal. <laughs> that's really, really tough. Um, because. So much of what metal, the look of the metal, is is going to be dictated by where it is. Because it's if it's a highly reflective metal surface, it's super complicated. Like I've been working on this bucket on streams. Like before I started working on this contract, I've been working on this really um, reflective EGA bucket in like on in the grass, and it's super challenging to kind of do that. I do have some photo reference, but it only goes so far. So I would say that. Metal is, is what I find most difficult. And also to try to render the different um, reflective areas and the surfaces with only like the EGA color palette, which is what I use. Um, that's that's challenging, super challenging. So let's see, this one is just the, ooh, actually, I have to get rid of a lot more of that. Then I'm gonna stick the shadow layer underneath and render it separately. Oh, it's happening here. Ugh. Wood in, in like an EGA is pretty straightforward, I, I would say, because there's only so much you can do, and it's kind of a... You have brown. <laughs> brown, dark red. And depending on the lighting, of course, because anything can take on any color. So let's move this one in behind. Yeah, so this, I'm going to kind of make those a little bit more painterly. Oh, <laughs> Leander, next you still have those magazines somewhere in the wardrobe in your parents' home? It's it's one of those things that, that it's very difficult to get rid of, those things, because they just there's so many happy memories associated with just flipping through them and reading the same articles over and over again. And I'm glad that you still have them. Why is this not? Come on. Alright. <laughs> Evil Tentacle, you like how the bucket's looking? The bucket's like the bucket's pretty okay. I mean I I'm only working I'm working in three twenty by two hundred resolution, so it's pretty forgiving. <laughs> But yeah, with now with my new blender skills, I could probably like render something up or whatever, you know. But good enough. <clears throat> it's all good enough. So far, I've managed to avoid, you know, really complicated things. Like, uh, the lodge is pretty boxy, so I don't really have to do stuff like, um, spiral staircases or anything horrific like that. Uh, Leander next, you recently learned about EGA graphics programming for MS-DOS. Not easy. VGA, much more straightforward. I, I find, um, EGA, like, super refreshing, actually, because I... <laughs> Lately, your hobby's been programming with old 486. Nice. 3D bucket, <laughs> reworking. Oh, just a Jeffy, thank you for gifting the tier one sub. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for gifting that sub to Bumblebee Bat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm full of admiration, Leandrinex, for people who can program on that old stuff. The 486 stuff, or using like the, the, you know, like the programs that they would use back in those days to make the art. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, 
I'll be eternally grateful for um, Adventure Game Studio. Because I don't have the, the technical know-how to, to actually truly program in DOS. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh no, Arabella as well. Playing with a, uh, the x86 assembly back in those days. I want to learn more, you know? There's always so much to learn, it's kind of amazing. But I am super grateful that there's technology now that lets me kind of make games fairly easily. Oops, this one also. Aha! Disaster, Disaster Squad! Still use GameMaker 8.0 from over a decade ago. I am still using um, an old version of AGS because um, I tried to upgrade it and then some stuff stopped working and I'm like, I'm not redoing these assets. So I'm staying with 3.3.5.1 or something. And until very recently, I was using... Well, not very recently. Until maybe a year or two ago, I started using Photoshop Creative Cloud. And I, was, I had been using Photoshop CS2 forever. Justin Jeffy says a DOS version of the Crimson Diamond would be amazing. I'd have to play it on a genuine IBM XT or AT with an MT32 connected. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen just to Jeffy. Um, I'm not. I'm not up to it technically. The, the earliest thing I think it plays on is an, a Windows 98, and I still have not upgraded to Windows 11. I'm just being super grumpy about it. Cause I'm like, why? I don't, it's fine. <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah, exactly. Updating tools can be chancy. I wouldn't update tools. Maybe for my next game, which I do already have ideas for, I will use the latest edition of Adventure Game Studio, but I'm not upgrading mid midstream. Arabella, you say you'd love to develop an adventure game someday, but unfortunately have no talent for art. Honestly, um, I really wouldn't... I wouldn't... wouldn't want you to be too discouraged about that aspect of it, because... The, you know, I'm thinking of, like, adventure games on, like, the ZX Spectrum, or, you know, like, text parser adventure games, like, the ones that you can make an adventure on. A lot of the graphics on there are pretty simple, but the games are still, like, so much fun to play. Um... So I would say that. And you could even develop something with like just placeholder stuff and eventually if you decide that you'd like it enough to make it you could you could um, maybe hire someone to do a bit here and there. But yeah, I mean I, I think that there's no real need to have like overly 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 elaborate artwork for anything as long as people can get the idea. Like if you like that's why I do super simple low res like limited palette stuff so if you're kind of worried about that aspect you, you can do something in like a low resolution like super low resolution and like maybe with like make it black and white or like just three colors or something and then you'll find you know like you, you then you'd concentrate more on the functionality of what the graphic is supposed to do versus like the aesthetic of it and if you have something that's clear and easy to understand then it's going to be beautiful by design um so yeah uh, I, I, I was coming from the opposite direction where I had, I've, like, I went to school for art and I have zero programming experience. And so, um, there are tools that now, and like, the, now there's the AI art, right? Like, there's the mid journey and the dolly and all that. So, there's also that aspect now that's just starting to come around. So, yeah, don't, don't count yourself out yet. I think it's only getting easier. And you know, like you look at you know someone like Francisco, who also like was self-taught in a lot of the aspects of it. Um, so it's possible. Oh, the internet! You've never learned how to use AGS, even though you've you know if you've known it for a long time. AGS is great. Like the community is really great. There's so many tutorial videos. So yeah, I mean, it, it's very easy to use, and this is like. Coming from me, like I don't have that experience with the programming, so 
I've been able to figure it out with a combination of like tutorial videos and the AGS forums and just super helpful people. Um, so I do encourage you to try it if, if, you, if it's something you think you might be interested in. Yes, and anyway, if we did test the AGS version that I'm using, you can use Windows XP at the earliest, I think, to play it, to play games. Oh, Leander, she translated Maniac Mansion Deluxe to Spanish. That's the closest you got to AGS. AG I, I really love AGS. I'm a huge fan. I'm probably going to give this shadow more of a personality. Still, what's this? You're not going to upgrade to Windows 11? There you go, Disaster Squad. Thank you so much. Yeah. Never worry. Disaster Squad says, Never worry about thinking your art isn't good enough. My games have an MS Paint look, but people still love the games themselves. Yeah. Because games are not just art. You know, the art serves that purpose. And if they do serve the purpose, and they do that effectively, then, then it's successful art, you know? Ah, Strobelson says, I avoided making games for so long because I started programming in basic and thought it would be impossible, but then Unity and the like have made it easy to use a WSWYSIWIG interface, which I don't even know what that is. Strobelson says, because I don't know anything. But yeah, the, the tools are coming to, up to meet that challenge. That gap, the tools are, are wonderful to fill those gaps. Yeah, and I can think of, um, yeah, there's other games, too, that have super simple graphics, like um, Purgatory Dungeoneer, which is going to be published by Strange Scaffold Games, has very simple graphics, but the gameplay is very deep and appealing, and so there's an, there's an aspect of that as well. There's a game that was made by Kit Fox Games that has kind of EGA-looking graphics. It almost looks like an Ultima 4 game, like it's super, like, tile-based very simple graphics but again the gameplay is what's fun the writing is what has the, um like that personality although i think the graphics have an amazing amount of personality too and just thinking about all the games we've all played like you know well depending on how old you are you know the games games starting out started out not having very elaborate graphics but we loved them just the same and we might have loved them more because of that <laughs> disaster squad i like the art is great but sometimes heart is greater than art I agree. I agree. I mean, there are games that have no graphics whatsoever, right? And, or you've got something like that's like NetHack or Dwarf Fortress, which is like very, very simple art. But there's still some, there's, there's something there for people to enjoy. And I'm so glad you're here to say that because you're speaking from experience. Disaster Squad. Yeah, Stable Snitch does exactly with frogs. You're repurposing public domain art. Yeah, I hear that game Pong is pretty minim minimal, yeah. Yeah, there's, so there's so many ways to go with it, really, you know? And I think that's what's so exciting about games, is that we can come from it from all kinds of directions, and like those tools will fill a lot of those gaps. And it, yeah, it's only becoming easier to do that. It's kind of weird. I don't know if I have to fill this gap. Oh, farewell to Nova Scotia. Farewell, Nova Scotia. Yes, go on some exactly. Clarity is the most important thing in narrative art. If we can tell what we're looking at, then the graphics aren't bad at all. Yes. Yeah. I could, like, very much concentrate on the function of, of the art. Yeah, and there are still popular games that, still, that just use ASCII symbols, Turblesness, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we also just stopped making games after Pong. Oh, Neon Totem says Ken Williams has a good blog on how modern game dev tools can really get you going fast. Ooh, Beta Human Studio, thank you. I will look at that link for anyone who digs text games. I love text games. That's why I love Adventure On. And it, I love Adventure On because, like, the engine is such that it's kind of, it looks really, it's, I think it's really easy to get the games to work on mobile as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, 
And even like there are save games in, in Adventure on as well, so you can save your game. Um, it's amazing. So the tools, the tools are there, and there's people um, making tools all the time. So uh, I, yeah, there's Adventure on. There's something called Richcast, which I learned about when I was um, I was doing this talk for Staffordshire uh, University, and. Uh, uh, one of the Oliver twins, Andrew Oliver, who was famous for making the Dizzy games back in the day, he's working on an app that um, is like a flowchart-based, um, object-oriented type of a game system that's um, supposed to be really easy, it makes it a lot easier for people to make games who don't know how to program. Uh, that's still in development right now, but you can check out Richcast, R-I-C-H-C-A-S-T, if you want to, and, and see how, um, how things can be done made with that tool. Although it's still, they're still ironing out a lot of kinks in that one. But it's just super promising to know that there are people that are really dedicated to, yeah, making game making really more, so much more approachable for everyone. Ah, thank you. 50 years of tax game. Oh, Betty Home Studio. Thank you. That's a Kickstarter. Sweet. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Eight days to go on 50 years of text games from Oregon Trail to AI Dungeon. Oh my god, I, I might have to order that. Oh my goodness. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And of course there's stuff like Twine and Rempy and everything. Um, I think it's super exciting because I, I... I think that there's so many ways to make games. And there's so many people who want to make games. There's, there's so many barriers that have been removed because of all this new technology. The yeah, Amberzine, yeah, that's why I gasped because I'm like, that book is gorgeous. I know I, I held off on the Art of Point and Click Adventure games, but I might have to get that one. I'll have to look closer at it. I think I think there's such a great potential for games to be able to show people's experiences in ways that like writing and, and, and movies can do to some extent but I think games are so much more of a you put your you literally put yourself in the shoes of somebody else uh, and I think that's super powerful and the fact that more people will be able to do that is just the best like adventure on is a browser based um, game engine so you, you don't need a lot of power to run it adventure game studio as well you don't need a lot of power to run it um so yeah super super like low cost it's low to zero cost i mean adventure game studio is free it's open source and adventure on is uh free as well ah nice uh Jasper squad that's what uh, links to what you're working on now yeah it's awesome yeah i love i love art like this you know like it does what you want it to do. Like you have a purpose for it, and it's got the paths. It's got you know it shows points of interest. Yeah, honestly, like don't don't let anything really stop you. Like any type of preconceived notion about how good something has to be, because no one else is going to stop you. You know, really, you only be stopping yourself. Ah, Shovelsnitch, you worked for Simutronics for almost 20 years doing text-based games. Holy cow. I love the fact that there is a company that was around for at least 20 years making text-based games. Ah, Bed Human Studio says the Kickstarter for the the um, 50 Years of Text Games book for the deluxe edition of the content at the first link so you can get a good idea of what the book will be like. That's wonderful. So, so yeah, this is like, I need to put these little pages in here. So let's just duplicate that. Oh, well, they're still making them. Oh no, you, the one you're working on got closed. Still, just, I love the fact that they're still doing that. I remember there was some mobile based, like, they weren't, they were narrative games. They were text based with a bit of few graphics. There was like, um, but they were like kind of just multiple choice based, like branching narrative games. 
And I can't remember what it was called. Like, there was something called something something broadsides. I don't know if those are around still. A disaster squad, you grew up with Commodore 64, so you like text games also. I, I actually never really played the text games on the Commodore 64. I played like the arcade ones. Oh, okay, a bit more complex than MUDs. Started in 1988 and still have two text based games going. Online multi user. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, wonderful stuff. I love to hear it. And honestly, I don't know if Grindislav is still here, but yeah, I mean, he's one of the reasons I started working with uh, Inventure Game Studio because I had seen a YouTuber, her crabbiness, do Let's Plays of the Ben Jordan games. And it's like, yeah, Grindislav did not let anything stop him from making games. He wanted to make games, so he made games, you know? And his art has gotten like better and better and better, and now it's amazing over the years. But yeah, he didn't think, oh, I can't, I'm not really that good at drawing, so I'm not going to make games. He didn't say that. He just made them, you know? And I really love that attitude. Ah, Stilbletish used Adventure Creator. So Adventure Creator Stilbletish is the plugin. Is that the uh, Unity plugin? I have been, I have been intrigued by that too. Yeah, Unity plugin. Yeah. That's yeah, good stuff. I, I love the like the elegance of Adventure Game Studio because it's it's all I need. Like I don't need any anything else out of my, out of my game engine. It's perfect. Yeah, Disaster Squad says Last Half of Darkness was my definition of feel versus art detail. I'm so pleased, uh, Disaster Squad, that you have the same that same attitude about the art. And our belly feels so encouraged now. I'm so glad that you feel encouraged. I, I think it's so important to to just try stuff, to just make stuff, you know? I think no matter what the outcome, even if you don't finish it, right? It, yeah, uh, yeah, just that's the quote. I really enjoyed my playthrough of Last Half of Darkness. Even though all the grammar errors is asked but yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I didn't, you know, we know, we know what they were going for, right? So, and yeah, that game it evokes responses. Like, there's tension, and it, there's some scary, you know, there's some scary parts in Last Half of Darkness, and it it does a good job. It does a really good job. You know, and, and the format of it being like an adventure game really works in its favor too, because you know there's not really any animation as far as like there's a bit of animation, but really not that much. But it doesn't matter. It actually makes it like that stillness is adds to the eeriness. Yeah, and Stillbolton says, "Yep, just do it." I picked up Unity just to see if I could figure it out, and I had a scene I liked enough to make a full game out of in a month or so. And Arabella says, I have to quit making excuses for not trying. Yeah, I mean, you're, you just, uh, you're, you're the only one in your way, you know, um, when it comes to stuff like this. And no matter what you make, no matter what, even if you don't finish it, it is still, like, better than not making anything. Okay, yes, Disaster Squad, you played part one and two of uh, Last Half of Darkness. Yeah, I only played the first part. Cause I felt like I got the like the gist of the game and stuff, and then I I um I I wanted to play something else and try something else. Clock, the clock is up here. So it's funny because this um the the uh, the telephone, it's kind of funny actually. I think I got rid of the telephone um, reference, but yeah, if you if you look at the telephone reference. I would, I'm so bad at Blender that I, I couldn't I couldn't make a curved cord properly like that would join from the telephone to the keypad. So it's just disconnected. 
And then in when I just when I did it, I ended up just connecting them myself. Cause yeah, I'm not good at it, but I'm just good enough to get what I need out of it. Yes, Edenwith is going to try my hand at one bit playdate art, but even a simple art style like that has its interesting constraints with just black and white pixels. Yes. I I need to also do more playdate art. Um for my own game. Like I did Make a game with Playdate, that recommendation dog game, which I can't show you guys yet, unfortunately, but um, that, it's a wonderful challenge to do one bit art. And yeah, Arabelle, you're really ahead of the curve because you can do programming, the programming part, so that's already something. That's a huge part, to be honest with you. Um, like, Francisco was like, self taught programming and self taught art. And look where he is now, right? Like, he's like making a living as a game developer. Um, most times, people have one or the other. Okay, Disaster Squad says, <laughs> for last half of darkness, um, <laughs> um, the first part's good and it kind of loses focus. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Clock. Oh my gosh, I'm fin almost finished all the back stuff. As you can see, like everything is organized in these folders, so this is back stuff. And I'm almost finished the back stuff, I just need to do this clock. Yeah, the telephone key with Edenwraith is an interesting set of colors. Yeah, I wanted something that would, um, would, like, stand out a bit from, like, every, all the other colors, but still look kind of sickly. Although, I'm, like, I'm not completely committed to these colors either. Uh-oh, I just think I tried to zoom in and out too quickly. Sorry. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> Fix it in post. Edenwith asked, does Chad Shakespeare make a secret cameo in Recommendation Dog? Edenwith, I, I think I can safely say, and I don't think it'll spoil anything, um, if I do say that Chad Shakespeare does make a cameo in Recommendation Dog. So, you heard it here maybe first? I don't know. But don't tell anyone that I told you. Where did, where's that coming from? Where's this? Where, where's this coming from? What the heck? No way. That's in there. All right. Well, I definitely don't need that. Yeah, and 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 I actually did a whole um, presentation about pixel art that's on my YouTube channel, um, and I do talk about how. If you feel like you're not too sure about drawing, like yeah, definitely like like reduce the number of colors you're using and reduce the resolution and those are like really good good starting points and the play date of course yeah like black and white that's all you get but you would be amazed at what can be achieved just with those deluxe tux wonderful to have you I hope everything is going well. Have a great night. And like I said, we're not going to be streaming next week, but should be back the following week. Um, and that'll be back to probably uh, pixel art, back to pixel art, back to buckets, back to Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Hopefully we'll be finishing that up soon. So that's clock. So yeah, I'm, I'm nearly finished back stuff, so in terms of what my progress is going to be like, it's back stuff, uh, middle bits, so middle bits, wow, this, yeah, middle bits is like the, the chair, which is completely made up, made, uh, constructed. Oh no, my, it didn't like that. Wait for program to respond, okay. Oh, that didn't take long. Oh, it's still it's not happy with me. Oh, okay. Let's give it a second. <laughs> oh, Arabella, I'm so glad you're you're enjoying stream. Yeah, I really I really like the atmosphere of hanging out with you guys. And we always have lovely conversations. 
Idiocracy, good to see you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm always afraid, almost afraid to do anything. Yeah, oops, you tried something we didn't think of. Yeah, I, I just tried to move around a little faster than it wanted me to. But yeah, so the next, after I finish the clock, I'll be working on this middle stuff, which is like this in-out tray, the chair, and all that is, yeah, all its own separate stuff. So we've got um, this pen set, we've got this in-and-out tray, um, which should disappear, but uh, the desk. Yeah, so you can see I've actually made the whole, th the, the, the chair all the way through. There's the whole chair. But most of it's hidden, but in any way, you know, it was good to make the whole thing. So we'll get to that maybe tonight. I don't know. We're making pretty good time. But yeah, all let's uh, let's get back to let's get back to clock. Oh, idiocracy! I'm glad you like the scene. Yeah, the full ra full. Just don't don't startle it. I, I don't want to do anything too quickly. Um. The full render of it was this, so it's... I still have a way to go, but I have until kind of, like, guess Thursday afternoon. I've got a meeting with my friend, video meeting, uh, for this. So hopefully I have until then. Hopefully I can finish it by then, so I've still got all this front part, and... It's getting there, though. Beta Human Studio, I have that problem to this day of the, the value of merely suggesting details with pixel art in 1992. Well, you mean in 1992. Couldn't figure out why my stuff didn't look right. I still have the problem of like rendering everything in detail, even if it's something really far away that you wouldn't necessarily see and it kind of blends together. I have that problem. I still have it. So I, I totally get it. Because, yeah, I'm a very, like, line-based person, so I want to just render everything. Even if it's, like, a, you know, tiny human far in the distance, I want to, like, draw their eyeballs. Which you really shouldn't. And Disaster Squad. I, like, luckily, I only need to make a few of these, these backgrounds. Because I would never finish either if I had to make my backgrounds, like, this involved. You have 100 rooms and 360 panorama. That's impressive. Like, I don't... I have less than 100 in my game currently, Crimson Diamond. I think there's like 70 or something. And that includes close-ups. I think I am. I'm getting faster at this, but yeah, it's just... Pixel art is so much faster, obviously. At least for me. Ooh! Close-ups and cutscenes and puzzles. Probably 150 Disaster Squad. That's amazing. And the thing also that it's also nice to think about when you're making a game is you keep getting better as you're making the game. So the, the process of creating is also practice. Because you're learning, you kind of are, you're inventing this entire workflow that you then kind of, you know, optimize, and then you just get better at stuff. So that's kind of a nice way to think of it, too. A oh, Disaster Squad, um, well, this one I don't know when this will be finished, but, yeah, the Crimson Diamond has a demo. But uh, this I have no idea when, when this is going to be completely finished. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to want to lighten this up a little bit. I should take more liberties with it. <clears throat> uh, Eating Way says, but even if you could draw well and quickly, it depends if you like the entire picture, keep modifying it, that. I'm amazed at how many variants of the university scene you made for TCT. Yeah, the color, the color is a completely other battle. 
really. Like, there's the drawing, and then, yeah, I usually do a lot of color variations for stuff if I get the chance. And, um, yeah, I get really bogged down with choosing color. Uh, due to Footless Lover, yeah, the uh, Crimson Diamond 2, Ochre Emerald, will be in 3D. It'll, be ver it'll also be in VR. It'll be like a, it'll be online, massive, massively multiplayer online <clears throat> game in VR. And Disaster Squad, I agree with you 100%. One of the best feelings is seeing people online playing and enjoying something you created. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Like, it's so much fun to, um... I haven't done this since COVID, but yeah, I mean, showing my game at events and everything is so much fun. And if watching streamers play in my game, oh, it's so much fun too. It's 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 just there's a lot to it. There's a lot to really be encouraged by, you know. Yep, there's going to be stribbles. So there's going to be mic microtransactions. There's going to be a hint line, of course. There's going to be, yeah, you can buy different skins for the characters. Yeah, I love um, Disaster Squad. I love seeing people with working through the puzzles because it kind of helps you gauge, well, is this a tough or a not tough kind of puzzle? Because it's not something you really can't do on your own. You need you do need other people to help with that. Ah, Yes. TCD2 will be in 4D transmitted via dreams. And the Matrix 5, the Crimson Diamond. You just jack in. I'm open to all these suggestions. The sky's the limit, you guys. Because I'm just going to want to keep milking it forever. Just download the game straight to your brain, which, according to Johnny Mnemonic, is, what, two gigabytes? <laughs> At least, you know, Johnny Mnemonic's brain is two gigabytes. I don't know about the rest of us. <clears throat> yeah, the Crimson Octahedron, if it's in 3D. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting, Strobel Snitch, because yeah, we think of a diamond shape, we think of either the playing card diamond, which is kind of just like a square that's been squeezed, or a diamond shape would just be, yeah, like, uh, the 2D version of a diamond, like, um, but a 3D diamond, I don't know what that shape would be called geometrically, like it's some kind of, some kind of polyhedron. Oh my gosh, it's trying to sit, help me by giving me recovery information. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, so yeah, at Beta Hume Studio, like a tetrahedron for for like a like a faceted diamond, like that's a super um like a yeah, it's super simple diamond shape. Like it'd be like a truncated something something probably. Recovery. It's saving recovery settings. Saving recovery information. I'll take this opportunity to talk about the yeah the links that you see on Nightbot. CrimsonDiamond.com has everything. Then of course there's the Steam store page. I, I put all these streams up on YouTube to watch after the fact. Um, and of course on Twitter I'm Julian Minamoto. And I do have a dev blog, a Crimson Gazette that I, I release every month. Yes. <laughs> JBL says, my brain is 12 megabytes. It's just a gif of a Bob Ross's squirrel. That's a pretty big gif, though. To be fair, Judith Butler's lover. <laughs> my brain would probably...
be just like a PNG file. Like it would be like a high-res PNG file. With like a transparent background you could put it on a t-shirt. If I had to pick a file format that my brain would be. Yeah. Wow, I don't know what this but so my problem with this progress bar is it's already full. So I can't even track if how long this is gonna take. Um Oh, the Neuromancer's Microsoft's about a megabyte. <laughs> Want a Tesseract? I did, I, I did make like a 4D cube for Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator. <laughs> and the, the portrait, it was a trader portrait that was a 4D cube Tesseract. And it was like a 50 by 50 one bit graphic. <laughs> And Zalavir on the design documents just like he wants like a four dimensional something. I'm like, I don't. I've got green and black, and I've got 50 by 50 pixels. But that's part of the challenge. Ah, oh, Disaster Squad. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, any. Yeah, I, I, I love to do that kind of stuff, to do interviews and stuff with indie devs and streamers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can set something up. Um, I'm not going to be available for a little while, but yeah, um, we can figure some dates and times. <laughs> Beta Human Studios says, in Neuromancer, they kill a guy for four megabytes of RAM. That's awesome, Disaster Squad. Who have you, who have you talked to? I like talking, as you can tell. I, I couldn't do streams if I didn't. I'm a little bit discouraged with this progress bar that's just not doing anything. You've been doing mostly dev, but would like to do more talks soon. Of course, yeah, I love to talk. In the early 1980s, 4 megabytes would be quite massive. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Come on, Clip Studio. Maybe if I, I don't know, um, just come out of it and come back into it. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to uh, fix this chroma key because it's just kind of getting a bit... There we go. Better. Yeah, I don't know. Clip Studio Paint. What are you doing over here? Okay, set a timer. Oh good, I'm glad it's busy. Oh, well, there it's gone. Okay, as soon as I said set a timer, it got scared and stopped. Um, and actually... Yeah, okay, so that's still working. I just like to check that periodically because it just likes to stop for no reason. It has the three finger salute, control, delete. <laughs> Mouse image, you would have killed it ten times over by now. Now, I know to like give it a bit of time because... Um, it is, you know, this is like, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a strange video card on this, and I'm asking a lot of it, so I, I know to be patient. And I think we're really spoiled nowadays, too, because back in the day, you'd turn on your computer, and then you would just immediately walk away from it, because, you, you know, you knew that you could probably just watch, like, a cartoon or something and come back and then log in. You know, these solid-state insta-turn-on devices that we have nowadays. So I should probably color this to oops. One day I will be more adventurous with this and like actually be better about picking colors. If I wanted to, I could probably change the recovery settings, but uh, it's okay. We're going to be okay. Yeah, <laughs> Did it just freeze? That's nice. Okay, are we back? Come on. Cooperate. Cooperate. I don't know why it does that. Like, I'm not minimizing it because you're not supposed to minimize it, but it just likes to stop. And I have no way of knowing that. Uh, <laughs> you're tired of drawing stone bricks, Disaster Squad? Crypt castles, castle looking areas. Um, right now I'm doing this, the bucket close-up has a lot of grass. And I'm kind of tired of drawing blades of grass. 
And that's the problem that we were talking about, about how you just can kind of hopefully simplify stuff down instead of drawing laboriously every shape as things go into the distance. I'm like drawing every single blade of grass and it's, it's not efficient. I still do it after all these years. I should know better. And I'm definitely not a fast worker. That's a big problem. But on the Crimson Diamond, I, you know, I can kind of make my own pace, which is nice. But it's also not nice because uh, I don't have any deadlines. And I should make my own deadlines, I know. Um, but... I need to start getting better about that too. I wonder, Disaster Squad, if you could have like some type of like linear, like reusable brick texture or something that you could then like resize and like skew and everything to at least be a guide for making more walls. Oh, Mousemus asks, Does browsers do power saving and suspend tabs. You have laptop on max performance power plan? I don't know. Um Let's look. Power and sleep settings. Edit power plan. Edit power plan. Let's edit power plan. It looks promising. Ah, the disaster squad. You made Grashy to change the spikes that, that gradient back. Add little dots and flowery bits. That's pretty much what I did. Okay. What do we got? Advanced power plan settings, I think, right? Because on battery, turn off display. No, advanced power plan settings. Uh, Internet Explorer? Would it... Balanced active. Would I want max? I want maximum to the max. No, the other option? Okay. This one? Change... Power and... Oh, power and sleep? Okay. Power and sleep settings. Okay. Should just be a slider. Um, like I hope you're seeing this. Okay, good. You're seeing this. Okay. Um, power and sleep settings. I set this to never because when I'm uploading the video onto YouTube overnight, no slider. <laughs> uh, balance, change plan settings. No, that's not it. What? How do I make it not balanced? Uh, no, Neon Totem, I am, I'm plugged in right now. So it shouldn't do anything, right? Like, it should just give me maximum power all the time? Right? What is this? What is all this? What is this? I don't know. No slider. Display sound notifications. I. Changing power mode. This shouldn't be that hard, right? Anyway, um, I'll. In case someone has an, an, any ideas, I will leave that tab open. So I click in the notification option next to the timer. Okay. Um, oh. Check after stream. Might be a slider there. Oh, um. Notif notification icon of oh, this thing? Um. Battery saver? No. Connected. I don't know. 
What would it be on here? Show additional plans. It's okay, Master. I think I appreciate I appreciate the attempt. Show additional plans. Yeah, I did I did um change plan settings or show additional pl plans. It's okay. I don't know. It just kind of does its own thing. I should be able to get maximum power all the time, right? No, it's all the same. It's okay. We, we it's it's decent enough. Like the the recovery setting thing. Oh, the the caption is a minor. It's a it's a minor thing. Like you can just yell at me. <laughs> it's weird that I have don't show show additional plans. I think I won Windows Ten. I think. Um. It's it's mostly fine. Like that's a minimal disruption. It's not like being on. Uh, it's not like being on uh, trying to save to the, the cloud while I'm, I'm streaming. It's not that. Oh, good. Yes, thank you. I'd like to I see your, your grass disaster squad. I really like that screenshot. I really like it. It's super creepy. That's super creepy. I would love to see like a like, yeah, last half of darkness kind of game, but like this type of a color palette. I love how the trees are bowed inwards like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I really like it. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, the MS Paint type of stuff. Yeah, and I, I think it's a, it's very effective, honestly, very effective. And I do, I really like the colors that you picked. It's kind of like autumn, and autumn's like spooky season, which is kind of nice. Yeah, exactly. It's it's great. It's super effective. You've done a great job. I think that practical approach to art is like a benefit of my arts education because I, I didn't I didn't go to um, I didn't go to university for art I didn't take fine art or anything where it's more theoretical I went to uh, a college for art and they treated art like a and, and drawing which it, they, they treated it like a skill you can learn it's a very it was a very crafts based approach to drawing and painting and I feel like people do get intimidated with art and, and drawing when it's a skill that like anything else, like it's like riding a bike or, or um, you know, cooking or anything like that, that you can you can practice as a skill and, and then learn how to be able to observe something and translate what you're observing into paper, you know, with varying degrees of accuracy. Like it's not even like, to me, I'm not that even too concerned about realism and that's not my favorite style of art anyway. Um, but the idea where the art is there to for a purpose and so when I was in school I, I um, specialized in editorial illustration which was like you'd read you'd get a magazine article and you'd read the magazine article and you'd get an idea of like the visual metaphors you could use and like the opinion of like the writer and even your own opinion and how you can create a tone of that opinion how to make a composition to show like inequality or how to show danger or how to show any number of things and you would try to create an illustration that would fulfill those requirements like I want to convey ideas and it was it wasn't of course everyone's concerned about style and what it looks like and everything but um, approaching it like uh, like you're building cabinets where it's like you have measurements these have to be fulfilled you fulfill the requirements the, the illustration has ideas that it needs to convey when you do that it is it, it, that equals good art um, and then everything else is kind of secondary 
So that's how we approached it. Which I really appreciated. And I actually just read an article on the internet like just yesterday about how drawing is a wonderful um, like a hobby for people and, and it's a good way to relax and be observant and not you know kind of get out of your own head in a way um, and this idea of entering that flow state where you're being challenged but not overly challenged like not challenged to the point of, of like frustration but enough to cultivate an awareness and it's really it's almost like meditation it can be. Oh, nice. Thank you. 360 degree background. I was, Disaster Squad, I was interested when you said 360 degree background because I wasn't sure what you meant, so I'm glad you, you're giving an example. Oh, that's great. Yes. Panorama. That's awesome. Yeah, I, um, something that I, I haven't actually done in the Crimson Diamond, which I kind of almost feel like I want to do is like see a scrolling backgrounds. I don't even know if AGS can do scrolling backgrounds. If it can't, I'm totally fine with it. But that that panorama wraparound idea is really cool. I love um, I actually love like designing p patterns, like wallpaper patterns too, that are kind of they, they connect not just from left to right, but also up and down. And that's very effective too as well. Like that's super creepy. But yeah, they loop seamlessly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you doing with yeah, the progress bar gives my hands a breather. The looping idea is really cool. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, eating with doing color research. Yeah, there's color circles, there's like different like color theory, like primary, secondary, tertiary, various color models, RGB, CMY, uh, RBY, red, blue, yellow, oh yeah, like the, okay, like um, mixing paint in real life, yeah, additive or reductive color or whatever. <laughs> ah yes, Bumblebee Bat, yes, thank you, yeah, thank you Jester Jeffy for gifting the sub. Yeah, there's different like color is a is a complete other thing too, where at to a certain extent color is is objective in that you want to have colors that are not all the same tone because then they're kind of hard to tell the difference between. But beyond that, it's kind of up to taste. That's really disaster squad. That's really cool. So the character is in the center of the room and then looking around. I love it. I love it. That's great. In, yeah, in my, in, oh, Cypress D, thanks for the sub. Yeah, in my, um, that's, <laughs> happy Crimson Cat Tuesday, Cypress D. Yeah, the, the, um, I think in, in my pixel art, my pixel art talk that I give on the, on the, on my YouTube channel, basically, yeah, you don't want colors that are too close to each other in tone, because then they kind of merge together. And they're they kind of hard to see the difference between. But as long as you have like a dark color and a light color, like black and white, or like a dark color, a medium color, and then a light color, you can pretty much pick whatever color you want for the most part, as long as they can you can tell the difference in tones. And it's kind of up to you and like what kind of mood you want to create. <laughs> I love oh, I love the snake. I love that super high res these emojis. Oh, purple, not a real color. <laughs> Researching indigo and violet. That's pretty okay. 
Do the screens? Um, I guess I could probably do the screens. Um, I wonder, though. I actually have screens that I created in Photoshop that I was going to import. Oh, and I have to go to dreaded, um... I have to go to dreaded, uh, Google Drive for this. I actually don't know the story about purple not being a real color. Uh oh, where's the office folder? Brown could fall under that category since it's a mix of colors not found in the spectral set of colors. Explain to me about the purple thing, because I don't think I know that bit. How purple's not a real color? I have screens. What did I do with them? They kind of look like these, like, whatever these are called again. I know, kind of, Oz, Oz something. Okay, I can't find them, so I'm not gonna... Actually, are they in the art section? We just dump everything? No, they're not here. Okay, I don't know where they are, so I'm gonna have to leave that till later. Okay. Purple not on the color spectrum. It's a mix of other colors that our brain makes into a new color. Purple is a mix of red and blue light, so not part of the standard Roy G. Biv colors found in the rainbow. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I don't know a lot about the theory of this stuff. So we did that. So the next thing we're going to do, I think, is going to be the, the chair. Actually, yeah, the chair. So... Turn off all this stuff except for chair. Yeah, that's the spotlight. That's even there's even a spotlight on the desk for like the desk lamp. But there's the whole chair in its glory. Uh, and I'm going to just do I like to duplicate in case I just mess it up beyond repair and then I just want to have a fresh layer. <laughs> Magenta. Magenta's a villain from X-Men. <laughs> Purple's a synonym for violet. I know, like, I know ones on one, like, that. Uh, all, like, there's ultraviolet and infrared, which are, like, on either end of the spectrum, but I don't really. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. So we're gonna do this. So see, it's very blocky, this thing. So first, I'm gonna just sand off some of these edges, because it's, it's, it's too. This is all stuff I, if I was better in Blender, like I could have made really nice beveled edges and rounded this off. Like, without having to just do this, but it's okay. Purple has more red in it, violet is more bluish. Yeah, I got, I got no idea. But yeah, there's also, um, if you need help with color palettes and like choosing complementary colors and everything, there's some really great sites that'll do that automatically. And even um, sites that will like basically take a photo and like pull out some of the colors and like give you a palette that you can work from based on that. It's like really, really cool stuff. It's all like there's so many automatic things. Oh yeah, Cypress D. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, don't worry about asking questions. I don't mind. I don't mind um, answering questions because I know people are in and out all the time on streams. This is for um, a project called I think it's called Strange Dungeon now. It was renamed from Hollow Heart because there's too many games that have the word Hollow in them, and Heart. So it's called Strange Dungeon I think for now, and it's um, kind of like a roguelike, roguelike exploration game that you have a crew management and spaceship management. And there's turn-based, kind of not, turn-based diplomacy with creatures that you discover under the underground. And yeah, so this is a game 
that uh, my friend from college, Elia, got um, Ontario Media Fund funding for. And uh, so he got money to finish it or, or work on it to a certain uh, stage. And um, when he was drawing up the proposal, I said, oh, yeah, sure, I can totally, like, he asked me if I wanted to be on it. I'm like, yeah, sure, be on the, I'll be on it. And, you know, no no one really knows or expects the money to actually come through because, you know, you're competing with all these other people. But lo and behold, uh, he got the funding, and so which is fantastic. But also means, like, you know, to commit, I need to commit the time to his project. So I had to learn, like, how to model stuff in, in, in Blender, in 3D, and then using Clip Studio Paint to paint, to paint the stuff. So it's been a bit of a departure for the past couple months for stream, actually, just because, yeah, I've had to, like, work on this stuff. But uh, we will be back. We will be back to, like, our regular scheduled, like, pixel buckets and, and stuff soon enough. I actually almost feel like this... The roundness of this chair is going to give me more opportunity to hopefully... Uh, be more interesting with the painting that's happening with it because I can um, really start smearing the paint around more. Yeah, the chair, the chair looks quite uncomfortable. Yeah, we're not going to see much of the chair, so, so it's okay. <laughs> Most of it's hidden behind the desk. Oh, well, your office has horrendously uncomfortable chairs. If perhaps it was so people would finish meetings faster. Uh-oh. Stand up, stand up, stand up meetings. This chair is actually modeled on a real chair. Hold on, I'll show you what the real chair looks like. Yeah, like, yeah, it's kind of, um, it's kind of a bit like that, uh, aside from, like, a 4X game, Space 4X game of the DOS era. Um, it's kind of, um, I almost think it's, like, a kind of, like, FTL, in a way. But there's also, like, um, yeah, there's also, like, a, like, a, kind of, like, a turn-based combat system, but you're not doing combat. Oh, yeah, here are my graphs. This is where they, that's where I left them. Speaking of, actually, let me just open this. So this was one of the screens I had. So this one was kind of supposed to go here. Well, that was fortunate. Oh, let me just stick these in here so I don't lose them. Oh, a banana. Right, thank you. I can do that. There we go. Thank you. Alright. Oh uh, yeah, I heard, yeah, Void, what was it called? In, into the Breach, yes, Cypress D, Into the Breach. And it's getting a huge free expansion. Nice. I, I never, I don't think I actually ever played FTL on my own, but like, yeah, that management of like various things can, that can go wrong. A oscilloscope. A oscilloscope. That's what I meant. These ones I might try to integrate more, but yeah, that's what, and I might want to add like green glow to the edges of the, mon the monitors. But for now, this is what they look like. Hey, where did they go? They were just here. Where did the third one go? That's good enough for now. Okay, and yeah, I'll show you guys the chair. It's like a 70s office chair, so it probably wasn't too comfortable to begin with. 
Aha! Eden with you start, you're finally getting around to playing Dark Side Detective. That's another one that's on my list to play. Very pixely, except for some kind of lighting effects, like from a computer screen that belies the pixel effect. I, I, I quite like that, the pixel, the, the, the lighting that they do on there. Kind of reminds me of Thimbleweed Park lighting. Dark Side Detective's a good looking game. And I think I have it. But it's another thing where, yeah, you should, I should probably, like, research, do research and play that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so here's the pet, right? Here's the... That was one of the... Gor <laughs> it's gorgeous! It's so gorgeous. Um, that was, like, that's not the exact one I used. I had more... I had more, um... Reference. I, I think... Yeah. Yeah, like, here it is. There it is. Yay! Oh, it's a P-U-T? Oh, yeah, because I think this was a 3D model that somebody had, so like, they, they didn't put P-U-D. P-U-T. It's beautiful. Inspector Waffle seems to have that dark side detective art style. I, I played and finished Inspector Waffles. I quite liked it. But there's, the, 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 um, the, the animation's pretty limited. So I don't know how much animation there is in Dark Side Detective. So here's the chair that I used as a reference. And it yeah, it doesn't look all that comfortable. <laughs> but it's actually it's good that um, I've opened it now because then I can I'll be able to use it as a guide. weird octagonal thing that's going on here. Ugh. Leandra Nick, she wish she had a Commodore PET. They're gorgeous! Really beautiful machines. Just... But wouldn't it be nice to come, you know, just to come back to a bit of that? Kind of look. <laughs> pet side robots in your pet. Ooh, this scene reminds me of Superman 3 with the program with the computer. Ooh, let's see. Oh, fantastic! Yeah! Yeah, exactly. That, that type of, um, that type of feel, like that old office feel. With the 70s vibe and like the carpeting everywhere. Oh, Judith Butler's lover, I feel the same way. <laughs> You're so lazy about emails that when you write and send when you feel like the most productive person that ever lived. I've started to do schedule send sometimes. Because I don't, I don't want everyone to know how shamefully late I stay up, so I'll schedule send for like 10.24 or something. Always in a regular, always in a regular time so it looks convincing. Wow, wow, you spent last Monday clearing out 1,700 unread emails, Eden with Holy cow. Yes, cassette futurism, except for D. Yeah. Just that, the, the angularity of, of the... of the, um... stuff. It's really gorgeous. It's... Do some cleaning up here, but yeah, I, it's super appealing. I, I do wish we we came back to some of that for sure. Everything had like edges and was like, it's a trapezoid. It's like the future. I also do that though. If there's like um, email that I want to keep on the top, I have it set to un. I just have a bunch of unread emails. Like there's like forty of them now. But I know if I file them somewhere else, I'm just gonna forget about them. So that's why they're there. Uh oh, Clip Studio Paint decided to recovery again. Well, 
I'm gonna take this recovery time to just have a bit of a snack. Yeah, sorry about that. I just, uh, I was getting really hungry and my computer, uh, the Clip Studio Paint was just doing its thing. So I knew I had some time. And yeah, I don't want to make you guys listen to me chewing. I know for some people that's really bother, that bothers people. I don't care if you watch me chew or eat or not, but just that the sound, no one needs to hear that. Okay. Right. So Zalafir just released a new game today. Yes. I, I don't know what it's called. It's a sequel to his game, Do Androids Pray? But I don't remember what this one's called. <laughs> yeah, streamers must be well fed and hydrated. Okay, yeah, so, so Disaster Squad, you hate when streamers eat without muting. Yeah. I, I just figure it's a courtesy, you know. <laughs> okay, so back. Hopefully Clip Studio Paint is back. Hold on. Uh, ba 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 ba. There we go. I didn't say Peppa Pig caption. I don't know what I was doing. Do androids... Uh, he, the first one is called Do Androids Pray, I think, but the second one is called something else. I'm afraid I don't know. But Delavere is like a, like a, like a juggernaut of uh, releasing stuff. Like, he's releasing that, like, like I said, like, so... What's it called? Uh, Witch Strandings, the game I worked on with him. The second game I worked on with... Well, third game I worked on with him uh, is releasing next week on the 7th. So, there's all that. Yes. Can Android survive? Thank you, Mousimus. Do Android shave electric sheep? Yeah, do Android survive? That's what it's called. Yeah.
Yeah, he's a, he's a, in, insanely prolific, our, our Zalavir. A disaster squad asked, what would you say an average full playthrough of your game would be in hours? Uh, probably like seven or eight hours, potentially. Um, there's going to be seven chapters, so I'm going to say average of um, average of an hour a chapter. I mean, some people take a lot longer, some people get through it uh, rather less time. But I have found watching streamers play it that, um, for the most part, for the most part, it's like, it's about an hour and a half hour or so. If they're really good, like, some people are amazing at playing these things, and so, yeah, I've, I've seen people play it in about, like, an hour and a half or something like that. So I think it's fair to, that's a pretty fair estimate. Oh, yes, okay, speaking of Electric Sheep, we're celebrating 40 years of Blade Runner this week. That's amazing. Ooh! Dual Names says, Androids do prey in the religion of man in the mythical adventure game Primordia. Primordia. Dual Names is the developer of Primordia and Strangeland, which came out like this year, Strangeland did. Man is a mytholo mythological creature, a perfect machine. And also Dual Names uses Adventure Game Studio. Francisco Gonzalez as well, who's making Rosewater, uses Adventure Game Studio. I think Chris Gwynn, who was here, I think he uses Adventure Game Studio as well. Yeah, exactly. Either way, it depends how, if people are incredibly methodical. Um, but, you know, like, if people are just kind of go through the game in terms of, like, what the stories i asking them to do, then it's probably pretty quick. Because, like, yeah, sure, the story, story is not directing you to go through every drawer and cupboard, which will have hopefully more stuff in it. But if, if you do so desire to do that, then yes, to your heart's content. Yes, rest in peace, Riker, Hauer, and Vangelis. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's another thing, yeah. Sometimes people get stuck because they're just, they're not reading or they don't click the obvious things. You never, yeah, you can never really tell. So in which case, it could take much longer. And Julie Cruz as well, yeah. Yeah, Vangelis is awesome. The first time I heard like a synthy type of uh, soundtrack, it was Castle in the Sky or Laputa, as it's known in in Japan. And the soundtrack for that is very synthy, and I loved it. It blew my mind. And so ever since, I've kind of had a real soft spot for that synthiness. It's really exciting stuff. Oh, crap. There's, yeah, this is a hotkey for rotating, I, and I never, ever, ever, ever want to use it, and then just to press it. Oh. But the problem is here is... Oh crap, I'm on the wrong layer. Oh no. Are you kidding? Okay, this is, this is easy to solve. This is easy to solve. Just duplicate this. Make one that doesn't have the bar graph in it. This is now called chair. Chair paint. Just get rid of the bar graph. Then this one is still bar graph, and we get rid of the chair. Gosh darn it. So these don't actually, these can be completely not in here. Let's get rid of these completely and put them somewhere on top. There. What? Meatloaf, meatloaf died? Like, just now Meatloaf died? <laughs> Cypress D, I got tired of having my heart broken, so I just mostly paint on one layer these days. <laughs> Oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, Milov died a few weeks back. January... January the 20th. January the 20th? My gosh. I don't remember any of this. Musically inspired. Good to see you. How are you doing? Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is like kind of out of my wheelhouse, this type of art. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, it's a learning experience. How are things with you? How are you things with the soundtrack work? Yeah, Cypress D, I don't even have a sense of time anymore. Oh no. Yeah, the year the years go by. They go by relentlessly. Oh nice. Okay, musically inspired. Recently got my studio back up and running. A couple of pieces of equipment broke down, but I'm back to producing music again. I worked on more Telwinium book two. Amazing and betrayed Alliance Book Two music. That's amazing. Telwinium. Oh my gosh, those Dave Lloyd uh, tweets of the Telwinium, like the process of the Telwinium art, so good. So good! Telwinium is stunning. Yeah, due to pointless lever time, unless I have a time stone, I have no control over it. And Botoid Alliance 2 as well, like I've seen like a lot of the Game Jam art last studio, it's so good! I could never do a Game Jam, I'm too scared. <laughs> Took a photo of his hand and painted over it. Uh, Dave did. Oh my gosh. Telwinium is great. I actually, I, I did play some. But it's another one of those. The same story again, which is I started playing it and then I stopped and then I haven't picked it up again because I haven't been playing anything at all. But it's really, really, he's just a pro. I'm kind of probably going to, yeah, I'm going to round these, these off, I think. And Slat was here. Slat was here uh, a little bit ago. I don't know if he's still around, but yeah. EGA text parser games. I was going to say there are dozens of us, but there probably aren't dozens. And it's probably not even half a dozen people making EGA text parser games. It might be like four, maybe? Three or four? I'm glad to see that you're up and running, back up and running, Brandon. Oh, nice, Cypress D. You're not making a text pressure game, but making an EGA dungeon crawler action game. I'm still there for it. I love EGA. The palette has grown on me over the years after some experience using it. Um, I'm so glad to hear it, because yeah, I just love it. I love it. It's so good. Yeah, me, Dave, or Slats, Dave Lloyd. Okay, that's, yeah, that, uh, Phil, well, Phil Fortier was. I'm not sure if he's still developing Cascadia Quest, so that's five. That's nearly half a dozen, right? Although, like, um, Dave's is, um, Tawinium is not uh, text parser, but we'll still accept it. Because it's, like, EGA and it's amazing. So it's, like, five people. <laughs> and that's five, you know, five more than I was expecting. So it's amazing. Oh, okay, and also, okay, uh, King's Quest 2 SCI, nice. Yeah, these are half dozen. Okay, good, Musically Inspired, thank you. Oh, uh, Musically Inspired, yeah, we were just talking about this earlier, about how the art, especially in, um, like, you know, the old uh, EGA type of games and stuff, like, 
it's like if as long as it like you know what you're looking at and it does the trick like it's totally like it's good it's good art and so I'm glad that you're you're on you're on SCI uh, King's Quest 2 SCI because yeah it's like people like that kind of stuff I love this kind of stuff so <laughs> Jude Butler's lover says five people that's the same as the Kill Bill list coincidence I think not Oren, Oren is pretty cool. Oren Ishii is pretty cool. I, li I liked her uh, her anime bit in uh, Kill Bill. It was awesome. I accept it. She gets to wear a cool kimono. I think I don't know if I mentioned, but I think I did that one one year. I did dress as Gogo Yubari for Halloween. Musically Inspired says, I just wish I had more education or something. It's like with music production, I knew I was missing something and took a course to fill in the blanks. I feel the same thing with art, but don't really want to take a course. Oh, Musically Inspired, there we have, there's gaps everywhere. We all have crazy gaps. <laughs> and, and the best, honestly, the best way to learn is like as you're doing it. Because then you get to learn specifically and exactly what you need to do to get things done. And nothing, nothing superfluous. You just like learn exactly, perfectly what you, what you, what you have to learn. Yes, Lucy Liu killed that role. Yeah, she was awesome. Yeah, it's 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 so much about time. It's so but so much about money. Musically inspired, and honestly, that's kind of the reason why I was like glad to do this this job that I'm working on now. Because not only am I like learning, I'm learning Blender and I'm learning Clip Studio Paint, but I'm also getting paid to do it at the same time. So it's like there's like no reason why not. Besides, of course, like pushing. The crimson diamond deadline back but this is that was really an opportunity for me to like upgrade my skills and get and yeah and also like also make money at doing it so i'm really happy to i got that i got to because that's all it's like really it's like time and money is like the whole thing and even like when you think about large-scale productions where money is not an issue like time is still always the issue there's only so much that can be done Yeah, that's a dream arrangement. Yeah, so I was really pleased to do it. But of course I want to get back to, you know, pixel art. I want to get back to doing my own thing. But this was a nice... This was a nice, like, sojourn into, you know... Something completely out of my comfort zone. So, you know, I accept, like, the fact that it's gonna... It, you know, it pushed back my own release date by, like, a month, a couple months. Uh, but that's just, that's, you know, that's sometimes how it is. Uh, Cypress D says, I've been a professional concept artist for about 10 years now, and everyone in the industry uses 3D paintovers because you need to achieve a goal, re good, reliable result quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you know that that is seen in a lot of places uh, because it's like, oh well, it's correct, right? So <laughs> um, it's just a matter of like, can I generate the three D part of it quickly? It, it can be the concern. I mean, the absolute wonderful best thing would be not having to go through this part, but. <laughs> There's a reason why, and because, yeah, it tends to, you can tend to create something that holds together. Yes, exactly. Musically inspired. That's the spirit. You'll get there. We'll get there. Soon, TM. Yes. Yeah, soon TM is when most projects are expected to be released, as long with, of course, uh, when it's ready. <laughs> Those are the two.
Uh, disaster, disaster squad just at the end of summer. That's fantastic. <laughs> Musically inspired says, just don't say when it's done. That one has been cursed. Okay. Noted. Ooh, then again, you also said Halloween 2021. Disaster, disaster squad. Ha. Uh... It is working. Uh, now you're really working, so still hopeful. It's good to have deadlines. It's also good to be able to push them if you need to. Yeah, I mean, my, my release date is still listed as, um, like, this year? But, yeah, it's not, I don't think that's gonna happen, realistically. Oh, wow, cool, yeah, you're, so you're wearing a lot of hats, Disaster Squad. Full-time job, streamer, YouTuber, father. Yeah, that's a lot. Game design can take a while, yep. That's another thing about, yeah, like for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people, it's like the other stuff pays money. And until you've released something, that game isn't doing any, like it's not making you any money. Although, you know, like I'm, I am on Twitch after all, and so that does help. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta make money. So that's another reason why these types of gigs are good. Yeah, Disaster Squad as well. Your your games are free passion projects. Yeah, I think it's awesome. And, you know, think of like Francisco. Like the his the first eight games of his were were free passion projects. Yeah, and if you get a publisher, Disaster Squad, they might, um, they might give you some cash or something, you never know. But yeah, that's a whole other job, too, is trying to find, you know, publisher money. So if you're happy doing it as you are, like, I think that's perfect. And maybe one day, you know, if you decide that you feel like, okay, I've gotten to a, a point where I'm like, I could, I want to do a, you know, charge, do commercial stuff, you can, but you don't need to. Sometimes our hobbies get ruined by trying to monetize them, so... Yeah, do, yeah, doing these exactly. Publishers will also give you a deadline. And Disaster Squad, do you sound from old games as well? There's some ways to kind of make beeps and boops and stuff that I've looked into. Um, like, uh... Beep box I've used to create some like door opening and closing sounds like super basic stuff. And there's some like sound libraries that have like free stuff too. Yeah, like the publisher are giving a deadline is probably good and a bad like it's a good thing. It can be a bad thing, but I think it's mostly a good thing. Although I am kinda glad I don't have a publisher because yeah, I wouldn't be able to do all the stuff that I do. I wouldn't have the freedom to do this kind of stuff. But then maybe my game would already be finished? I don't know. It's looking like less... Oh, yeah, that... Yeah. 
looking a little less <clears throat> uncomfortable. I really like that panorama stuff, Disaster Squad, though. <clears throat> uh, Disaster Squad, I am from Canada, Ontario specifically. So my game is set in, in Northern Ontario. Ohio? Nice. <laughs> You've met so many nice Canadian devs and streamers. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad. So the Canadian reputation for niceness, I haven't let that down. Yes, Hungry Goria! That's right, I follow Hungry. Hungry's awesome. 8-bit show and tell. I don't know 8-bit show and tell. Be a Hungry Goria. Really, a Hungry Goria is a wonderful person. Super relaxed, too. Oh, nice! She was on your show, Disaster Squad. Fantastic. If you have, like, a link for that as well, please, please, please share. This will all get smoother later, but I, like, my, uh, my, in my impulse to smooth this stuff out, I probably shouldn't anyway, because then it kind of loses the painterliness. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, Cypress D likes the combat system in your Cursed Games Disaster Squad. Adding that extra element of engagement. Nice. Thank you, Disaster Squad, for the YouTube link. I'm just, I, I open everything in Safari and then I get back to it. Thank you, thank you. Just make sure that the loaded properly. Great. Fantastic. Oh, great. Yeah, it's great, great that you, you talk to Hungry. Cool, cool, cool. Done. Oh. Action-based games. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. I feel like they'd be more challenging than adventure games. So good on you for doing it that way. Okay, I think that's... Okay, that's fine. I think it saves the spot. Yeah. That's really awesome, actually. Musically inspired, Brandon... It's good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Um, have a wonderful night. Uh, and happy Crimson Cat Tuesday. Oh, nice. And go on some. I'll listen to the Hungry Goria episode. Nice. Oh, I like, yeah, Shadowgate. That style of, sh of game. Um, I've never played a Shadowgate type of game until I played something that's actually a fairly new game called um, From Beyond Prologue, and it's kind of an adventure game with that same kind of interface, and it's really good. And that's a game that kind of has simpler, kind of simpler graphics. It's like kind of more developed graphics, but still on still on the simpler side. So if you like Shadowgate type of stuff, like but more like less not a role playing game, just an adventure game, From Beyond Prologue, very very good, and I. I don't know if it's free or cheap or what. In the last half of darkness with action. That's really cool. disaster squad. It's really cool that you're doing like some like a, like a different kind of a genre, not just adventure games. And I say that to someone who's making an adventure game. Cuz I do think that's like so much more challenging. I think that's also why like you coming from that programming perspective is also going to is also super helpful.
I, I mean, um, Adventure Game Studio can sometimes do something like an arcade if you really... But it's kind of forcing it to do something that's not really made to do. Yeah, hybrid games are fun, Cypress D. You have a dungeon crawler, has real-time combat, similar to what you have. Understand the desire to hybridize concepts. Yeah, I love, um, you know, like, speaking of hybrid, I really, of course, like, will, of course, love um, the Quest for Glory series. Although Disaster Squad, come to think of it, I was thinking Arabella was the one who doesn't have the, um, who's strong in the programming and is not as so much art. But were you also that same way? Because I kind of always like most game programmers come from the programming side, so I feel like I kind of just assumed. I can't remember if you said it or not. So I think we got, well, you know, we did the filing cabinet. Got some work on the chair. I'm gonna start looking. I'm gonna take a peep and see what Robot Spacer's up to. If Robot Spacer is playing Colonel's Bequest, because it's about that time where I'm switching for someone. Okay, you come from Disaster Squad. Sorry, you come from the art side. So sorry. Yeah, I just um, I always assume that it's the programming because usually it's the it's the um, it's usually the people who are programmers making games, and, and it's not the people who come from the art first. So yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Got confused. That's actually even more impressive, because I wouldn't even know where to begin to make an arcade-style game. You gotta- it's so, like... It's so much more involved than, like, a fairly static... Um, screens for adventure games. Robot Space is still on it. Fantastic! That makes my, my life a lot easier. Um, so, let me just go to Big Julia View. Um, and, yeah, we're gonna- we're gonna start taking a look at rating. Oh, cool. Yeah, thank you. And also, thank you for your Twitter, uh, Disaster Squad, so I can follow you. Squad Disaster. Okay. I'm just talking about it. Okay. Great. Thank you, thank you. Great. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, as I said, um, next week there won't be a stream, but the following week we should be back on Bucket. We should be back on Indiana Jones and all that, so we'll be back into the swing of things, hopefully. Oh, Maximus is saying, by the way, a thousand followers special in the works. That's something... <laughs> That's something I was thinking of. Um, I already said, like, oh my gosh, many, 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 many months ago, countless months ago, I said that... If I ever got to a thousand followers, I would show photographs of myself when I was six years old dressed up as a princess. I guess that's still on the table. Disaster Squad, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to have the chat with you and, and um, work alongside you. And good luck with your current project. Um, yeah, uh, Pixel Jess also streaming, dual name says. Um, I feel like, I always feel like the obligation is Colonel's Bequest, because it's... First of all, I'm fascinated to watch anybody watch uh, play the Colonel's Bequest because of the art, but also the game design, and, and how they approach it, and how they feel about it. That person wanted to, thank you so much for being here, and yeah, thank you for, yeah, the, 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 the piece is coming along, it just, it takes, it's super time consuming, that's the only thing. Um, that, but this particular, like, workflow... <laughs> Uh oh, did my. Oh. Okay, yeah, it's just still working. Good. Go, Monsama. Good to see you as always. Have a wonderful night or morning or however the time is there. Yeah. Yes, Godspeed on your product so you can get back to dithering. Yes, I cannot wait. 
to get back to dithering. Cypress D, good to see you as well. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna rate it up, but yeah, I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Um, and we might be back to our usual, which yeah, I'm. It's like coming home. It's like coming home. I'm gonna take a look at uh, what robot spacer. I know we've been ro I know we've been raiding robot spacer like every time, but first of all, robot spacer is an amazing streamer, and second of all, he's playing like the game, the game. <laughs> And it's amazing to watch him play it like multiple times and to see how he's been learning this the game as he plays it. It's fantastic. I, 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 I'm going there because I want to watch it. <laughs> Mr. V, thank you for being here. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. Ah, okay, Masmus, you're going to watch... Do you jump off the train and watch Robot Spacer's VOD instead? That's how good his streams are. Actually, I have been... I don't usually watch VODs, um, but I think I might watch his because of, of the Colonel's bequestness of it. But Masmus, have a great night. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't help myself. I cannot help it. <laughs> I got to. I just got to. Get us there. Okay, yeah, let's rate it up. Okay. Um, raid. Uh, hold on a second. Robot spacer. It's where I want to be. I, I, oh my gosh, take two, day two. Fantastic. Uh, 